eight months ago, North Dakota State celebrated its record seventh FCS National Championship in Frisco, Texas. But today, it's time to look ahead to 2019 with the Bison opening up the season at Target Field in Minneapolis against the Butler Bulldogs. It's time to kick off our 13th season of NDSU football on the KBOY Camp YR Bison Network, and it's coming up next. Live from Target Field, the North Dakota State University Bison host the Butler Bulldogs, presented by Pioneer. Get your horns up! Let's get on with the show. Get your horns up. Green and gold are back in town. Get your horns up. Hooked up and ready to throw down. Toss that coin up in the air. Bring the boys up to the line. Hold your horns up high because it's bison time. Hello and welcome to Target Field in Minneapolis as we kick off the 2019 season for the seven-time FCS National Champions, number one, North Dakota State, taking on Butler. Thanks so much for joining us here this afternoon. Brian Sean, Lee Timmerman with you. Ryan Gellner will join us from the sidelines. And we've been to a lot of unique venues over the years North th for North Dakota State LT, but this is a special one. It's a glorious atmosphere. The Bison are here, and Coach, Di and uh, it, it's, it's time. We are here. The Bison fans and faithful are here, and we get to watch some football in one of the best baseball stadiums in the country. Over 35,000 North Dakota State fans expected. The migration started on Thursday, it continued yesterday, and you look all over downtown Minneapolis, and it is a sea of Bison fans. Butler will kick off. North Dakota State will have the football first. Drew Bevelheimer will kick things off here for the Bulldogs and Bevelheimer, one of the best field goal kickers in Pioneer League history. He has 36 field goals made, made eight of nine last year. Also a good job in the kickoff department. And the 2019 season is underway on this Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. And a return up the middle by Dimitri Williams. And Williams, who redshirted last year as a junior, is still in bounds. Finally pushed out all the way in territory down to the 30, but a flag is down back at the 20 yard line. Super start for Williams and the special team unit, but this flag came out quick and it came out from behind the play. So it was about 10 yards behind where Williams made his initial cut that this first flag came flying out. Illegal wedge formation on the return team, numbers 44 and number 18. Penalties have to distance to the goal. North Dakota State keeps the football, first down. That is Hunter Lukey and Adam Cofield, and that is a new rule and a point of emphasis in college football is that wedge block, LT. Yeah, the wedge is where you come together and try to force something right up the middle. That is not allowed anymore. You cannot align shoulder to shoulder within two yards of each other uh, for to block for the ball carrier. New rule, you're right, Brian, point of emphasis. We may see it more early in the season than we do later in the year once everyone settles in. So instead of starting inside the 40-yard line of Butler, Trey Lance, Starting quarterback will take things over here at the 10 yard line for the Bison. First play up the middle, Ty Brooks. Nice job defensively by Dan Del Grosso. 67 tackles last season. Maybe a yard there for the senior out of Fargo South High School. Here's a look at Lance, the redshirt freshman out of Marshall, Minnesota. Brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission. Funded by beef farmers and ranchers. 
Again, the numbers not big there for Lance. Does have a couple of touchdown runs. And a helmet goes flying for North Dakota State. Another running play in the trenches as Nash Jensen will retrieve his helmet. When we were talking with Tyler Roll about his role as the new offensive coordinator, he said this, this especially this week, he's had all kinds of things running through his head. What am I going to do when whatever happens? Well, what is he going to do when a helmet pops off? That athlete has to come off the field to play for at least one play. And so a new person is in there at left guard for a play. We'll bring up third and a long six here for North Dakota State. The Bison last season, 52% on third down. Butler was last in the FCS, giving up 54% on third down. Lance, plenty of time, dumping it off. Caught, Dimitri Williams squeaks around the edge, and he has a first down. Zach Kubis against North Dakota. Carson Shooting, Raul North Dakota. Zach Johnson, Spring Lake Park, Minnesota. Cordell Volson, Belfort, North Dakota. Ben Ellison. Pauley, Minnesota. Garrett Malstrom, Vergas, Minnesota. Cy Brooks, Fargo, North Dakota. Christian Watson, Tampa, Florida. Phoenix Sproles, New Hope, Minnesota. Dimitri Williams on the end around, has more room, finally dragged out on the play by Mason Brunner, but not until Williams has another first down. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Dimitri Williams certainly has played a lot of snaps for North Dakota State over the years, but they have been mostly at wide receiver. He actually redshirted last year with the goal to do this, become a running back for the Bison, back more to maybe his high school roots. So Dimitri Williams was patient last year and not playing for that national championship team uh, on a regular basis to have this run as a running back. The action for Lance. Quick drop off, and that is the first reception this season for Christian Watson, who ran over a man down to the 39-yard line. Luke Sennett making the tackle, but Watson, who made a couple of acrobatic plays in 2018, they expect him to take a huge step forward for the Bison this season. Gorgeous route there run by Watson. He runs and gets Aguilar, number eight, Devin Aguilar, thinking he is running a fly pattern, is able to bring his hips down there. See, do you see how he sat right there on that and then pivots? gets back up field and the Bison are about where they were after Williams's opening kickoff but NDSU's offense on this first drive looking pretty good Christian Watson a vastly improved player I asked coach Hedberg what has Christian done well and where has he improved the most he simply said everywhere let's take a look at that shield starting lineup for the Butler Bulldogs and we mentioned Luke Sennett a moment ago he he's good went over a hundred tackles last season for this relatively inexperienced group Mason Brunner, 73 tackles. He's first team all Pioneer League here in the preseason. Cameron Browning, a redshirt freshman. Devin Aguilar played last year. But again, just a smaller group, LT. Yeah. Not, not real big up front. But with a solid player at each level, I think you have to talk about uh, Kane, Mikey Kane, number 40, as a defensive end. So they do have a real solid player at each level. Squeaking free through a hole that time was Adam Cofield. And a young man that Tyler Roll said has really grown in the confidence department throughout fall camp. Cofield, I, I like the way he runs. I know he was in limited roles throughout the last couple of years and usually on the back end of blowout games, but I think he does a very good job of keeping his pad level and keeping his momentum going, yet still able to make cuts in limited space. That's what I like the most about Roll, uh, about him. And you're right, T-Roll said he is playing competently. Inside handoff again. More room up the middle for Ty Brooks. And that will bring third down and about five for the Bison. I would say the major question mark for this Butler defense is how physically are you able to handle NDSU's power game up front? Just the size, the strength. And you, you saw Hunter Lutke, number 44, didn't even have anyone to block on that Nodak Insurance Company replay. Real nice pickup, but here's a third down and five situation where if you want to be an offensive coordinator, this is the type of situations that are the most difficult. Four receivers in the formation and the tailback here on third and five. Now Dimitri Williams will motion back into the backfield. Two on the play clock, and Trey Lance wants a timeout. It was pretty obvious that the offense was not on the same page in that particular situation. People moving, trying to get set, running out of time. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and a check card. 
Visit GateCityBank, GateCity.Bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life, member FDIC. You see that little Bison logo there on that upper shot right at about the 14 yard line? That's where the pitching mound used to be. Right. Yes, for this game, they physically have to dig the mound out right there, and then they put the turf uh, down over the top of it. But yeah, that's one of the major things you have to do to play baseball or to play on a baseball field is is to deal with that pitching mound. North Dakota State a 21 game winning streak coming into this game after a perfect 15 and 0 record a year ago. Lance is going to keep it up the middle. Trey Lance breaking free. He's going to take it all the way for the first touchdown here in 2019. And that is one thing this young man can do is run with the football. We saw that last season. We saw him break a couple of big ones. In fact, against USD, he fumbled it and then ran it. But the power to break the arm tackle right behind the line of scrimmage and then the speed to finish it off. He has both. Trey Lance, when you talk about running, he can get it done. And this is a very new look. A swinging gate, and James Hendricks is the holder, and they're going to get two points out of it. Joe Jets told you to look for this, didn't he, Brian? He told me a couple of weeks ago, Brian, watch our first extra point. You might see James Hendricks in there in an unusual formation, and it's a swinging gate. And on the pitch, the Bison able to get two. And when I asked why the decision was to do this, he said, Brian, for the last five years, we have not given any other opposing teams a different look on special teams. We need to give them a different look. Taking it in that time was Jake, Jake Reinholz from Shanley, the kicker. Well, that's one thing that teams all across the country are doing is making sure that they get a copy of this game. They want to study how this new NDSU team is going to look. Well, there's a new look for everyone. Here's a Bobcat scoring recap. Eight plays, 90 yards. North Dakota State converting a couple of third downs, including Trey Lance on the third and five taking it in from 33 yards out like Butler did a decent job of forcing the Bison on that drive into a couple as you mentioned third and uh, and fairly long third and five third and six opportunities but we also saw in that first opportunity for the Bison to have the ball on offense just how much physically stronger NDSU is than Butler is and Ryan Holtz will boot this one away Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Angling to the bottom of your screen. And taken by A.J. Deinhardt at his own five-yard line. Trying to follow some blocks. Not a bad move. Up across the 30 to the 32-yard line before he is taken down. And this will be the first career start for Sam Brown. He's only thrown three career passes. First team All-Stater out of Gonzaga College High School in Edgewater, Maryland. And just a redshirt sophomore. Replacing uh, Will Marty, who played all of last year and had very good numbers, almost 27 yard, 100 yards passing. Kayvon Smith is the tailback, and he's going to get the run, and he is drilled in the backfield and taken down by Derek Tuska. Woof. Oh, what a sweet way to start the year for number 91, Derek Tuska on your Nodak Insurance Company replay. Look at he shed that block, and that is a textbook tackle, picture perfect tackle. Boom. Both feet up in the air and both shoulder pads on the on the dirt. No gain will bring up second and ten. I don't see how Butler's gonna be able to run at all today, to be honest with you. Four new offensive linemen for the Bulldogs. Delayed handoff will go to a guy that does just about everything for this squad for Butler and that is Brad Snyder a senior 180 pounds out of Bennett Academy. Let's take a look at the North Dakota State defense brought to you by Shields. Logan McCormick, Kimberly, Wisconsin. Cole Karch, Germantown, Wisconsin. Jack Darnell, Champlin, Minnesota. Derek Tuska, Warner, South Dakota. Aaron Mercado, Oakland, California. Jackson Hankey, Parker, North Dakota. Jabril Cox, Kansas City, Missouri. 
Marquise Bridges, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Michael Tetsy, Indianapolis, Indiana. James Hendricks, Bemidji, Minnesota. Josh Hayes, Lakeland, Florida. A lot of new faces in that starting lineup for the Bison on third down for Brown. He fires, and it's incomplete, I believe. It was juggled around and not hung on to. Adam Baker, the intended target, and it's a three and out for the Bulldogs. No doubt, insurance company replay, isolation. This is what the quarterback's looking at. Nice job by Josh Hayes to anticipate that receiver, kind of run that little slant, sets down on it, and then breaks toward the ball. Solid finish through the ball for Josh Hayes. Hayes has really put on the muscle. You can really see it in his shoulders, up to 186 pounds. Started in the national championship game a couple years ago. People forget how wounded well, the Bison were in the secondary with Jalen Allison and Jalen Wimbush both injured. I think, yeah, Marquise Bridges' first start was in that title game as well. And Drew Dingman with the punt and over end short kick and it will come to a stop at about the 30 and picked up and run out of bounds. Kaporis. Uh, Jimmy Kaporis and that will take us to our first time out eight nothing North Dakota State 838 to go here on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. North Dakota State leading eight nothing. Second possession for the Bison starting at their own 32 yard line. Lance two of two for 37 yards on that opening drive and also the 33 yard touchdown run. Two in the backfield, three receivers in the formation here on first down. Haven't put the ball in play yet. Now we get ready to go. Cofield and Brooks are the two backs side by side next to Lance. And it's Brooks got a nice block there from Cofield and that springs him. Ty Brooks great speed all the way across the 50 yard line inside Butler territory before he is taken down and North Dakota State moving the line of scrimmage at will. Also moving downfield. If you're a, a wide receiver in this offense, you must be willing to block. Watch. Once this play starts to move up, there's Dimitri Williams, one of the best blockers, and from that wide out position when he played it, Phoenix Sproles also committed to block. Those two guys open up another close to 15 yards for for Brooks. So we know how Ty is so solid in that outside. But when you're blocking downfield with your wide receivers, those plays are going to be bigger and could pop all the way. El Grasso had a run a long way to make that tackle. Lance is going to air it out one on one. Cover to the end zone. Caught! What a catch! Touchdown, Phoenix Brawls! How do you get rewarded for blocking? You get opportunities later through the passing game. Sproles on a straight fly pattern and a beautiful finish to concentrate on the ball. And he's able to stretch across and get into the end zone. Phoenix Sproles has been so consistent in terms of catching the ball. That's a difficult catch. One of the better ones he might make all year. Traditional point after attempt this time as Reinholds boots it through. And it's 15-0 North Dakota State. 47 yards on the connection as Lance hooks up with Phoenix Sproles. You're watching Bison Football on the KBOI KFYR Network. Back here at Target Field in Minneapolis. Time now for the Gate City Bank Fan Cam and send us your home or watch party picks and we'll show them in the fourth quarter. Just send them over to the Valley News Live Facebook page in the first, second, and third quarter shots. And we'll show them to you in the fourth quarter. North Dakota State leading 15 to nothing. Trey Lance, his first career touchdown pass was a beauty. Dinart takes it from his own five again and runs into a couple of men and then dragged down right at about the 20 yard line. Josh Hayes, I think, was the first guy there. Let's pause for a quick message from Torbold Seed. Tobold Seed offers the latest in seed cleaning technology to ensure your crop's full potential. Tobold Seed also contracts, produces, and supplies the finest quality non-GMO soybeans to food manufacturers around the globe. Tobold Seed, grow with us. 
Sam Brown will bring out Butler here for the second possession for the Bulldogs after a three and out to start things off. Brown fakes a pitch now will swing it out and it's Snyder with some room and space and he's close to a first down before he's taken down by Jabril Cox who closed quickly. And let's take a look at that Butler offensive unit starting lineup brought to you by Shields. And Snyder, a guy that did so much a year ago, 972 rushing yards, also caught 37 passes. The receiving unit led by Dennis Stephen, who's a guy that is a transfer from Western Michigan. They lost a really good receiver last year in Pace Temple with 85 catches. And four of the new guys on the offensive line are Brand making their new. first start as well for Butler today. Yeah, John MacArthur is not the new one. He wears number 55, pretty solid. They like, they like what he can do. Another nice tackle in space. James Hendricks, the senior out of Bemidji, makes the stop after a gain of about three yards, maybe four. On the carry that time was looked like number one, but I don't know if we have a number one in the program for Butler. Is that Nick Orlando, the backup I, quarterback? I, I think it is Nick Orlando. Yep, in there in a different position. Just try to get him out on the field. But I think Butler with that little fake and then the pitch back we saw a couple of plays ago to Schneider. Those are types of things that are they're going to have to do to try to throw the Bison off. Boy, breaking quickly on that pass was Marquise Bridges, who has really come into his own after coming to North Dakota State as an offensive player, made the change a couple of years ago, and boy, it's worked out well. Pretty good isolation look here. Do you see how close once he makes his read and how fast that Bridges is able to get his momentum back toward the ball and knock it away. You're right. Marquise came here as a wide receiver and uh, the Bison just said we think you can play corner. Go learn the position and, and do it well. And as we mentioned earlier you had played a big role in a national championship game and his role will change throughout the year too, from straight corner to being the nickelback. That's what he's doing right now. So multiple levels. Round quick drop again. Pass is complete, but it is out of bounds. Caught by John Turley was out there trying to make the reception. And that will bring up a punting situation for Butler. I think Butler is finding just, you know, we, we saw Hayes do it. We've seen uh, Marquise Bridges do it. And, and I, when I talk about it, I mean closing on the ball on these short little hitch patterns. So somewhere along the line, I think you're going to see a stop and go or something like that from this Butler offense to try to take advantage of how aggressive these corners have been early in this game. That was Stephen Dennis who was the intended target out of bounds and that will bring Dingman on for his second punt attempt. Kaporis back deep once again for North Dakota State. This one a much better kick high and Kaporis called for the fair catch and then got away from it and it will come to a halt at the 30 yard line. We'll step aside 622 to go in the first quarter North Dakota State. Good start here in Target Field. 35,000 fans making their way to Minneapolis. We're back in a moment. Buying, building, or refinancing. Start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard pre approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Beautiful day here in Minneapolis, 70 degrees and some sun. Morgan push up the middle. Ty Brooks, good chunk of yardage. Let's go to Ryan Gellner for a first International Bank sideline report. Ryan. Yeah, thank you, Brian. One of the uh, unfortunate things early in the season is injuries, and the Bison already have one. Young linebacker Jasir Cox has a left knee injury. Uh, don't know the severity of that injury. Do know that he is out for the remainder of the football game. He's on the sideline, has ice. Uh, his teammates, though, have all come over and consoled him. Doesn't look good. We'll hear more on Jasir Cox later in this football game. But for now, Jasir Cox is out. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. And Brooks has a first down for the 41. And this was a young man that the Bison, I think as the season went along, LT wanted to play him in more and more packages and get him more comfortable because they're so impressed with his athleticism. There's a look at Jabril's brother. Yeah, the younger brother of Jabril Cox. And yes, there's uh, Jazir. And you're, you're right, Brian. There was an opportunity to get him on the field, and, they, and the Bison wanted to do that. And he played such a huge role in special teams last year. I think he had a tackle on a kickoff here in this game already. Could be a big, big miss. Bison continue to hammer 
the interior as Dimitri Williams gains about five, maybe six yards. The first play of this drive uh, coming out, and I saw for the first time Trey Lance survey the field, make a pre-snap read, and then make the call at the line. I know, and, and I don't know that he switched the call, but those are just the things. See him looking, he's making his pre-snap read. Randy Hedberg really wants him to trust this. Trust what you see before the snap. Three receivers to the bottom of your screen, and Lance fires. And that is hung on to and caught. First career catch for Josh Babich. And boy, he is a tall drink of water. Six foot six out of Illinois. Without Ben Ellison being able to play early, he's nursing an ankle. Guys like Josh Babbage and Noah Gindorf, you might think would get a little bit more look, but yeah, he is a big target. Six foot six, he's able to set right uh, in front of the uh, the safety, pushes him off just a little bit, set down in front of Ryan Smith, and pick up that first down. And little combo route on the left side with the running back as well. Very athletic too, else he was a volleyball player in high school, so brings that skill set. Hesitation and then. Cofield pushes the pile ahead across the 40 down to the 39 yard line. A play like that to me is just the difference in the physicality that Butler brings compared to the teams that we're going to see later in the year because it was kind of a play that didn't develop lo a lot. It looked like a whole hum looking play. What did it gain? Six yards. Yeah. So the Bison can run. I know it's early in the first and still in the first quarter, but they can run at will in this game, I think. Ooh, Lance bubble. bobbles the snap and streaking in to recover it for Butler was Mason Brunner. One of the, the first, first turnover of the game. One of the captains of this Bison, or excuse me, of this Butler defense, Brunner, a senior, one of the senior leaders, third leading tackler last year. And it, the ball just is not caught cleanly by Trey Lance on this Nodak Insurance Company replay. And then you talk about having a nose for the football. We saw Brunner have it as he won that battle to the ball. And it was all North Dakota State Butler at least able to stop the momentum here with a turnover and pretty good field position all the way at their own 46. Brown, pump fake now is going to air it out. And overshooting his intended target that time. Adam Baker. Sophomore from Mainville, Ohio. Just three receptions in 2018. Okay, but that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier where you're trying to take advantage of how, of how uh, the Bison cornerbacks have been so aggressive. That time they were looking over toward uh, Bridges' side of the field. A little hitch, a little step, a little pump fake to see if you can move the corner with your eyes or your movement in the backfield to allow your wide receiver an opportunity to get open a little bit deeper and maybe beat the safety on that out. Jeff Forrest got a glimpse of him there. The head coach for Butler has been there nearly 15 years. Hesitation. Snyder waits and then waits some more and finally he is taken down. Was able to pick up a couple. Pretty tough run there in the middle. Hanky Mercadell trying to stack things up. One of my favorite lines of the week came from Coach Voris and, and when he was talking to his players after practice, he, 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 his, his pitch was, you're like when Apollo Creed picked Rocky. He had one shot at it. Whether you're a first-year player or a fifth-year player, this is your one shot to play the number one ranked team in the country. In but front of this many people. <laughs> but you're down by 15 already. Yeah. Again, Butler did come back from two touchdowns to beat Youngstown in Youngstown last season in the season opener. Really shocked Bo Pelini's bunch. Brown on third down, drops it off Snyder room, cuts it across midfield, and then taken down right by the first down marker. I think he's a little bit short. You have to like uh, what Sam Brown did on that play. And, and what he did is he looked over and he made the hot read. He saw that one of the corners was coming. Nodak Insurance Company replay. You're going to see, I believe, Marquise Bridges fly in there. Whoop, their ball goes right where he was. You flip it back to the outside and pick up a really nice gain on first down. Solid read, quick movement, confident throw from Brown. Fourth and two. Butler leads the offense on the field. Good move there by Jackson Hank. He made a long run to make that tackle and keep him short of the first down marker. Brown's going to throw. He's under pressure. Flushing right. And he 
he had a throw it away. It might have been deflected at the line of scrimmage as well. And a turnover on downs for the Bulldogs. And Brown was forced into having to improvise, and I believe the Bison player on the far side did tip this thing. There's Tuska flushing Brown, so now he's like, ooh, can I find somebody? And it was the Bridges or? Nope, James Hendricks. Hendricks knows how to get his hands <laughs> on nine, the football. Nine career interceptions, had five of those picks last year. So good field position again here for North Dakota State at the 46. Quick hitter up the middle. And a flag comes in as Dimitri Williams has about nine yards, but we'll check the flag. This is a Missouri Valley officiating crew. Twin Cities native Matt, Gall native Matt Gallagher. Holding. Offense, number 75. 10-yard penalty be from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. And that will negate the run from Williams and bring up first and long. Called on Dylan Radens, the second team preseason All-American from Becker, Minnesota, Jr. And a very good one. Radens, first team All-Valley in the preseason, along with Zach jo Johnson as well. First and 15 here for North Dakota State. Play action for Lance. And Hunter Lukey stays on his feet across midfield down to the 49-yard line. And Lukey, a guy that's a backup fullback. And Tyler Roll said, we're really pleased with this young man's process. Just a redshirt freshman, 250 pounds. Fake the dive to Williams. Get Lupke in space. He juggled just a little bit, secures the ball, and then really does a fine job of getting that hand down, keeping that momentum going, and on a first and long, making it second and manageable. Out of Spencer, Wisconsin. Bofield sidesteps one tackler, and then he is swallowed up by Nick Mahalik and Mason Brunner. No gain on that play. Three of the four defensive linemen are new. We've not heard anything from Mickey Kane yet. Had five sacks, led the team a year ago, and sacks did not come very well for Butler. Just 12 last year total, and five were made by Kane. But that also means that he is going to be watched much uh, more, uh, much stronger as the year goes on with Butler because they know how good a season he had. That'll take us to the end of the first quarter. Third down. And four coming up for North Dakota State. The Bison lead at 15-0 after the first 15 minutes. Trey Lance, a touchdown run and a touchdown toss. 15-0 Bison on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Start of the second quarter, 33 coming up for North Dakota State. Cofield is the tailback. Williams in motion. And it's Williams around the edge. And he is taken down. Nice open field tackle there by Mickey Kane. Just mentioned him a moment ago. And that will bring up fourth down for the Bison. It came from that defensive end spot. His job to force that play back inside. If he cannot make the tackle, well, he did both and did them both very well. Defensive freshman of the year in the Pioneer. Cole, I guess, last year. That will bring on Garrett Wegner. His first punt of the 2019 season will try to pin the Bulldogs deep. High punt. Snyder lets it go. Bounces. And down at the five-yard line. A lot of different Bison players sneaking in. And how about Jabril Cox showing his wheels to get down there? Jackson Brown, I thought, also was down around the football. So far, just 25 yards of offense for Butler, 206 yards for North Dakota State in that opening quarter. 
Not a little lot, but if you're on average for 800 <laughs> yards in a game, you're going to do well. Yeah, yeah, you'll take that. Rundar has made his way down from Fargo. Josh Hayes now on the line of scrimmage. Snyder trying to get some breathing room. Not much room, maybe a yard. Up to the seven. Costner Ching, one of the first players up on the bottom of that pile, number 94, also sophomore from Castlewood. Also see Bartholomew Okabu in on this series as well. I'll tell you what, coming off the bus, Mr. Ogbu <laughs> would scare yeah. anybody, number 97. Just yeah. a retro freshman out of Bismarck. Yeah, there was an NFL scout at a Bison uh, at the Bison earlier this fall camp, and he goes to Randy Hebber, ooh, who's that? <laughs> and he goes, oh, he's just a redshirt freshman. He's got a long way to go. Brown swings it out. Reception is made on the play that time by Brad Hooth, but closing quickly was James Hendricks. And that will bring up third and long. Uh, from his safety position, Hendricks with flat responsibilities. Nodak Insurance Company replay. James reads this one perfect. Soon as the receiver spins to try to get upfield, there's no chance for momentum there as Hendricks makes that tackle. One of the captains of the Bison this year, James Hendricks. And yes, he is. You saw him pointing, yelling. He and Jackson Hankey, it is their responsibilities, mostly with those two, to make sure people get lined up correctly. Brown under pressure. Oh, that was almost a tremendous catch that time by Stephen Dennis, but Hayes able to jostle it free at the last moment and a three and out for Butler. They're giving Brown some different looks because Tutsi came on a safety blitz on this particular one. He's hung in there, got the throw off. Pretty good hand fighting, I thought, on the outside. Nice job by the officials to let both going. And you talk about a defensive player with ball skills, that's what you're doing. You're taking it away because it looked like Dennis had the opportunity to make that catch, but Hayes was right there once again. We'll bring on Drew Dingman once again for a punt. And a play clock is under 10. They'll have to hustle up here and get set. Down to four. Snap is not happening. I don't think they got it off in time, did they? Nope. Flag does come out. But when you're near midfield and prior to the ball being snapped, delay a game, kicking team, five yard penalty, still fourth down. And you talk about the opportunity of playing a field position games that Coach Entz did with that last punt. That's why you do that. You pin them back down inside. You your defense does a job, holds it on three. And so, so instead of having to make a risk on a fourth down play at midfield, your defense holds. You're going to get the ball back with a fresh set of downs with really good field position. And the Bison are bringing everybody in tight here. Dingman in close quarters. Both Kaporis and Hendricks are back for this return. Dingman quickly gets it out of there. And it'll be Hendricks from the 49. Spinning away. Hendricks still on his feet and then dropped by Joseph Camacho at about the 40-yard line. We'll step aside. 15-0. North Dakota State leads. Good field position for the Bison when we come back. Let's take a look at the Gate City Bank fan cam. Send us your home or watch party picks to the Valley News Live Facebook page, and we'll show them in the fourth quarter. Hi, Brooks. On the stretch play has a nice hole on first down for North Dakota State. Across the 30, down to the 29-yard line. Good enough for a first down. And one of the Butler players down on that play. 96. It looks like Camacho. Yeah. Just made that tackle, I believe, on special teams. Senior, 6'3", 275, out of Powder Springs, Georgia. Nodak Insurance Company replay. This is an outside zone, and really, Cordell Volson and uh, Johnson, both the guys did a really good job, but he was able to, the Bison offensive line are slanting that a little bit harder on the outside zone, blocking it just a little bit different this year, being more aggressive with those linemen downfield. And it looked like he was his own man, Justin Marcus, that got into him low, and it was an ankle or a knee. Ankle, looks like. Let's 
pause for a quick message here from Shields. Out here, one can be a lonely number. At least, until you find the one. You got this. Concern from both teams here on the health of Camacho. Now try to get him to his feet. This is number 66, Nash Jensen. He was number two on the depth chart coming into fall camp. And we asked Tyler Roll as he rose to the start. Guard spot. And he said, frankly, yes, I am. Yeah. And he really matured. He took it more seriously. He really had to work on his body. He came in at nearly 350 pounds when he came to North Dakota State. But you can see him. He is a large man. Still listed at 326. But the one thing I think that Coach Roll, just to follow up on that conversation, talking about uh, Jensen, he said he challenged him. First day of fall camp, he, he challenged Nash and said, you have an opportunity here and, and, and played out what he needed to do to try to do that. He said, ever since they had that first meeting on the first day of camp, you have seen an upward climb in his production in order to earn that starting left guard position. A very highly recruited young man out of Osseo High School. Not too far here from the Twin Cities. Well, another big reason why having this game here is a boon to the Bison program. Look at the recruiting base. There's, I think, 17 players from the Twin Cities on the roster. Lance play action. He's going to air it out again. Taking a shot to the end zone. Just off the fingertips of Christian Watson. In on coverage that time was Cameron Browning, redshirt freshman, who was beat on the first touchdown pass by Phoenix Sproles. Yeah, you're right. Sproles torched him for that long 47-yard touchdown pass here in the Nodak Insurance Company replay. Lance setting up with confidence, puts the ball in a catchable position. Watson trying to use that, that, that height he has, but the, didn't quite get the peak of the ball because of the way the coverage was and his momentum taking him a little bit deeper into the end zone. Staying on his feet is Dimitri Williams. Good strong run there for the senior out of Rosemont High School just south of Minneapolis, and he's got a first down. Garner with another tackle, but Williams with real good surge off that right side. I tell you, that combination on the right side, with help, obviously, from your fullbacks and your tight ends, but that combo of Johnson and Volson is going to be tough to beat in terms of running the ball for the Bison. Lance will operate out of the shotgun again here on first down. Cofield met right in the hole and taken down after a gain of about three yards, maybe four. He's Brunner again. He's been everywhere so far here today. First team, preseason, Pioneer League. And how well has it worked out that Dimitri Williams took his red shirt last year, switched positions, put on about 15 pounds of muscle, over 200 pounds here in a senior season? Yeah, he convinced the Bison coaches that that's what he wanted to do, and he made the commitment to doing it, and they honored it. Lance will throw again across the middle. Wide open man, Josh Babbage, touchdown. career touchdown for Babich, the sophomore out of Barrington, Illinois. Should be a good look on the Nodak Insurance Company replay. Two tight ends in the in the route and the linebacker losing Babich and he was wide open in the back of the end zone. Ryan Holtz boots through the extra point and it's 22 nothing North Dakota State. Trey Lance 15 yard pass to Josh Babich. 11 2 to go here in the first half from Target Field in Minneapolis. A couple of touchdown passes. One to Babich, one to Phoenix Sproles. The Bison 246 yards of total offense, and it's 22-0 North Dakota State. 
Yeah, one third of his college completions are for touchdowns. <laughs> Six of seven. Over 100 yards and two scores. Garrett Wegner on to boot this one away. Taking it about the five yard line of this Peterson Farm C kickoff. Kickoff for planning season with Peterson Farm C. Bringing it out. Backup running back, Kayvon Samuels, 5'7. Out of Baltimore, Maryland. And Butler will start at the 30 yard line. Look at the Bobcats scoring recap. Five plays, 40 yards. And he has you set up on the short field. In just a minute 36. Butler on, a, on the offense, if you look at a lot of those plays from last year, if they find something that works, they go back to it. So far, they haven't been able to find too many things that have worked consistently. Pitch to Snyder, a couple of buys in closing, and then he is taken down on the play by Tuska after a gain of a couple up to the 32. Total plays. Well, Butler just hasn't been able to to sustain many drives and North Dakota State has been ground heavy here in the opener not surprising it was going to be an issue coach Vora said it's one of the hard things to is to consistently move the ball against these Valley teams because you don't get big chunk plays so your defense is is out there way too long and then gives up big plays Snyder take it again cut it back up inside across the 35 to the 36 yard line Let's revisit the second touchdown pass if we have time for, for from Trey Lance and give you an idea of what he was looking at. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Right here is the guy who's going to get the touchdown, but you'll see as we roll it, you'll see the tight end, number 87. That's Gindorf clearing the defensive back. You slide right in from behind it, and that is a fairly easy touchdown there from Trey Lance. Good read, though. Third and five, flared out and complete to Snyder. And he is wrestled down by Hanke, but he's got a first down to the 41-yard line. Boy, nice touch there from Brown getting it over. Hanke holding hand his hand. Of Derek Tuska. And yeah, Hanke looks like he's... If there is a position good. defensively, the Bison do not have a lot in terms of depth. It's that Mike, that middle linebacker position. Hanke holds his hand, goes back to the sideline, and he gets right back out on the field. Maybe a stinger there laid a pretty big hit on Snyder. That's the first third down conversion for Butler today. Brown pump fakes under pressure down he goes. And that is Justice Kelly with the sack. Junior from Milwaukee. Came here as a walk on has bided his time in this program. And getting an opportunity to play here. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Brown's trying to get enough time to run a deep X, a deep cross pattern. And there was a player open on the near side, but he did not remotely close to have enough time to be able to get the ball out. There's a look at Kelly, 6'3", 221. He, he was looking at Adam Baker. Baker did get some separation, but by that time, Brown was going down. Booth the motion man and now a Time timeout for Butler before the play clock expired. Jeff Boris hoping his team can hang in here down 22. Whether you're buying building or refinancing Gate City Bank home loans are locally approved financed and serviced Gate City Bank for a better way of life member FDIC equal housing under. Let's go to Ryan Gellner for a first international bank sideline report. Hey guys, another injury on the Bison sideline. This one though is a little bit unusual. Kicker Jake Reinholz suffered a quad injury on one of his kickoffs. It was not on the two point conversion. It was on one of his kicks up kickoffs. They're calling it a pretty serious quad injury. He certainly is out for this game if not longer. All right. Thank you so much Ryan. Boy, how about that hit? Marquise Bridges laid a lick on Snyder. Oof. Bridges was playing corner and he came in on that soft motion and then he reads it. Watch the read. Number nine, trust your eyes. Boom. 
I give up my opportunity to try to guard the guy. That's what Butler wants him to do. Keep going across the pattern uh, with the receiver. Bridges sees it, is not fooled. And in a Tampa 2, your corners must be able to tackle to perform well. Not sure how aggressive Kyle Connor, the offensive coordinator for Butler, will get here on third and 16. Time for Brown looking for Snyder overthrew him out of bounds. That brings up a unique situation for North Dakota State as Reinholds won the kicking job. Matt Ed said it's his. They do have another kicker on the roster, and he's a freshman that joined the program back in January. He graduated high Freddy school early. early. Griffin Krosa from Ohio. So he has been through a spring ball in all of fall camp for North Dakota State. And at some point, they may need to use that young man. But right now, Wegner is handling at least the kickoff duties. Kaporis calls for the fair catch at the 22-yard line. Pretty good punt that time from Dingman. And there is a flag, flag back at the 30. Yeah. During the kick, holding, kicking team number 42. A 10-yard penalty be added to the end of the play. North Dakota State keeps the football. First down, media timeout. So that'll move the ball up to the 32-yard line for North Dakota State, leading 22-0, 7.31 to go here in the first half from Target Field on a beautiful day here in Minneapolis. So while we were away, North Dakota State changed its mind and said, let's re-kick this thing and give Kaporis a chance maybe, and he is back at his own 40-yard line. So we'll boot it again. Not only does Kaporis have sure hands, he's a receiver, and he's done very well in that uh, department, but he also has pretty good straight line speed if he's able to pop free. So Dingman booted away again. Kaporis from the 43 can't make the initial man Ball. miss. Lost the football, and it's picked up by Butler. And Butler comes up with the football at the 30-yard line, and I think that was the backup linebacker, Justin Marcus, that got on it. Hold on, the Bison might not be giving up the ball here. We'll look at it again. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Was Kaporis down well, on the, the tackle? Knee. Covered by the kicking team. First yeah, this will be replayed, and I think the Bison will keep the ball. Yep. This will be reviewed, and we got a good look at it there from our camera crew. So this will definitely go back to North Dakota State as long as they review it. Yeah, the knee was definitely on. He was engaged Rolling with the tackler the the while the ball was still review. tucked under his left. I believe it was his left arm. I think NDSU will get the ball. Was that Snyder that made the tackle for Butler? Wow. From all the way down there to wrap him up. Another look, Nodak Insurance Company replay. Kaporis makes a move, ball still secure. There's the tackle, there's a knee. Plays over, then the ball comes out. Butler searching so much for a break in this game, and I don't think they get it on this play. the transfer from Western Michigan bounced around a little bit originally from Lamont Illinois has been hurt had a knee injury was on the roster last year has kind of bided his time and now as a senior getting an opportunity to play some meaningful football we talked about the receiving core LT I mean this is a team that lost 80% of its receptions and 84% of its reception yards. yards from last year and a big reason for that was a young man by the name of Darius Shepard who has made the 53-man roster for the Green Bay Packers. And just to tell you how ridiculous that is, he was just given a tryout with the Packers. He was not signed after the draft. And here's a look at Gallagher. Mike is not up, but I think they are saying that. Yeah, Mike wasn't on. We didn't hear the explanation. 
Try again. Mike check. There we go. After review, it's been determined that the runner's knee was down at the 43-yard line prior to the ball being fumbled. It'll be first and 10 for North Dakota State at that spot. Will the game clock operator please reset the game clock to 7 minutes 24 seconds? 7.24, please. I love your point, though, Brian, about Darius Shepard. He just impressed everybody me, in snap. that Packer camp. So it is definitely hats off to him. That is not a position you have... You were given any way, shape, or form. You were just given a chance. And Shep made it. Trey Lance trying to take North Dakota State down the field here. 7.24 to go in the first half. Then he starts this drive from the 43. Lance certainly has not been pressured, but you can't fault his decision making. Another good decision. Big hole this time. Up to midfield is Ty Brooks. He's now up to 60 yards rushing. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Like that angle. That's a really good shot there from looking what would be down the third baseline, which is obviously the sideline in front of Butler. All the uh, green and gold in the end zone. Still weird to see a, a, a goal post <laughs> on target field. High formation this time for North Dakota State on second and three. Play action for Lance. Rolling, firing on the run and finds a wide open man on the sidelines. Phoenix Sproles. Another reception inside the 30. Finally taken out of bounds at the 26 yard line. Well, here's how uh, how well that Bison offense has done with it is ch its chances. Touchdown, touchdown, and then three touchdowns in there. Not too bad. Three out of five. You'll take that every single time you play. North Dakota State was driving inside Butler territory before Trey Lance mishandled that snap. That Brunner fell on top of it. The only turnover of the game so far. Well, not much room that time. Butler ready for that play. Crashing down and making the tackle was Jonathan Jordan Castleberry, a redshirt freshman out of Prairie View, Illinois. Cofield, not much. That last pass play, though, that connection that got the first down, Lance had multiple options on all three levels and picked, the, obviously, the one that was the most wide open in the middle. Lance, plenty of time again. Surveys. This time it's Noah Gindorf, his other tight end. Touchdown. Places this pass is impressive to me because he does use the size advantage of Gindorf. Here's your Nodak Insurance Company replay. Lance is staring left, nothing there. Looks back to the right. Oh, we got inside possession on a tight end. Let's get this ball up in the air. Let my my man with size go up and get it. Touchdown. Extra point is knocked through. And North Dakota State leads 29 to nothing. And that is the first. Career catch and the first career touchdown for Gindorf, who's a guy North Dakota State was really excited to get. He got a late offer from the University of Minnesota when TJ PJ Fleck was hired as the head coach out of Crosby Ironton High School, 6'6, 262. I mean, this is a giant kid. And it comes from a football family. His dad, Michael, played, uh, he's in the Coppers Hall of Fame and also played a little professional ball as well as we look at. Him corralling his first touchdown and his first pass. Dad played a little bit with uh, the Buccaneers, a little bit with the Vikings, and the tradition continues. Check out my first touchdown, Dad, and I'm sure he is. Well, you talked about all the Minnesota kids. Zach Johnson, Johnson our starting offensive guard, said his mom, she, he <laughs> believes she had over 150 tickets that she bought for this game for friends and family. Of course, it's from Blaine. Well, Blaine, Minnesota. 
play to Spring Lake Park High School. Wecker on for the kickoff duties again. This sets us down at five. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. And the Bison, a good job of gang tackling again. Josh Hayes was there for the initial stop. And then a host of Bison getting in on that stop. Okay, when you're keeping specialty or you're keeping stats, who do you, <laughs> who do you credit with a tackle like that? There are about six or seven green jerseys all around the ball. Let's look at Trey Fort. Young man that is a senior out of Moorhead, Minnesota, played at Shanley High School. Trey's really made himself an important person uh, in terms of the special teams uh, types of plays for the Bison. That's where he has really earned his niche. That man coaching his first game as a head coach. Five years as defensive coordinator under Chris Kleiman. Brown. Down the sideline, just overthrew his man Snyder. Jabril Cox in coverage for North Dakota State. Let's take a look at the Bobcat scoring recap. Bison moved quickly, just four plays, 57 yards in two minutes as Gindor called in his first career touchdown. See Lane Tucker is also on the field. The Bison are shuffling in quite a few defensive linemen here so far in this first half. Tucker, an interesting guy, all the way from the state of Wyoming. Was offered by the University of Wyoming, decided to come to Fargo instead. Samuels finds a crease, breaking free. Boy, pretty good shake in the middle there as Cox finally makes the tackle, but there is a flag back at the 24. I thought I saw a hold. Personal foul. Clipping, offense, number 55. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. That is John MacArthur making his 25th start for Butler. Yeah, worked his way about four games, I think, into the his freshman season into the lineup and hasn't been out of it since. Only returning starter, we talked about that, a captain on this Bulldog team. So that'll back up the Bulldogs deep into its own territory here. About the 13 yard line. I know we've only watched about 25 minutes of football but it just still looks like the same old North Dakota State <laughs> doesn't it. It's, well we, we talked about it for 90 minutes on the pregame show. Uh, they are kids that you might not know their name, but man, they are so talented, and we see that talent again play out right in front of us. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Brian Sean Lee Timmerman with you from Target Field in Minneapolis, and now another whistle and a timeout for Butler. Timeout, Butler. Yeah, it has to be frustrating for Butler. Their second charge timeout of the half. It'll be 30 seconds in duration. You had a decent play. The penalty knocks that play. You move back. And it still takes you a full play clock to get the to get the call in to get everybody lined up. So yeah, it's uh, it's not rolling. Well, it's rolling, <laughs> not uphill but downhill, uh, backwards for Butler. In North Dakota State, a unique season. The Bison a 12-game schedule. Last time the Bison played 12 regular season games in a oh, season was back in 2014. The next opportunity after the season will be 2024. And here's a look at the upcoming. Schedule for the Bison. And I like the non conference schedule because here we have Butler and we'll see what the Bison do to that. And, you know, we'll find out what UND brings. But on paper, anyway, each of the first four games throughout the first month in the non conference, your caliber of opponent ups itself. So you get a little bit tougher, stiffer competition getting ready for the conference. Boy, delayed handoff, and that didn't go anywhere. Samuels is wrapped up. And again, Tuska. it's Tuska. Who has really turned himself into a fine football player? Senior out of Warner, South Dakota. His brother Jared played here. Second team preseason All American. He and Cole Karch are the top returning sack men uh, for the Bison. Well, 16 career sacks for Tusca. Jo enjoys flying in his downtime. He has his private pilot's license and his own plane, which he keeps out of hangar in Moorhead, Minnesota. Which you have been in, right? I have. He's a good pilot. 
Brown under pressure, firing, Hit. and it's intercepted by James Hendricks. Well, we're on a baseball diamond, right? And so what do you say when a safety is playing center field? Pretty much what James did on that one. This was a fairly easy read. You're going to see number six come into your screen, the and there he just takes care First of that pass, which is way too high. James with terrific ball skills. His double digits now in career interceptions for NDSU. Yeah, ten career INTs was the fifth leading tackler a year ago for North Dakota State. And here's another look at it. Nodak Insurance Company replay. They he just reading the quarterback's eyes. Brown takes him off to the right. The pass was thrown too high, and Hendricks made him pay. So North Dakota State quickly back to work. Dimitri Williams, another carry for that young man. Sixth carry for Williams now, 37 yards. An injury in the running back core is one of the reasons why Dimitri Williams' role, I think, this year, would you not agree, becomes a lot more important with that injury to, to Wilson. Yeah, Seth Wilson tearing his ACL in spring ball, unfortunately. He will miss this season. And Wilson, a young man, when he's been on the field, has been oh, electric. Gonna be, he was going to have a huge year, but he'll have to wait a year as he's rehabbing that knee. Back to the ground game again. Boy, look at the hole. Williams tiptoeing the sidelines, touchdown! Flag. A flag is back at about the 25-yard line, so hold everything. And that flag is, is not on the ball side, it's on the other side of the field, away from the direction in which the football went. Personal foul, chop block, offense. Numbers 59 and 68. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. You have to assume that there was a man engaged on a Butler defensive lineman, and then he was hit low. low. There's a look at Big Zach. Boy, is he a mammoth human being. 315, Zach Johnson. Well, the small guy in the starting lineup, as they're listed on paper, is Dylan Radens. At two pounds under 300. <laughs> so instead, North Dakota State backed up now, second and 21. Lance is going to keep it again, ran into his own man. I think that was Nash Jensen who was locked up. Lance to about the 39 yard line. Bring up third and very long. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Check out these two guys. This is where the chop block and the penalty happen. There's your, your center and your right guard. As we roll this and you engage, you see Johnson going down low. After shooting, fired straight off at his guy. It wasn't a real big uh, blast. He didn't take hit him too hard. But yes, when someone's engaged, you can't hit him low. Lance is going to take off with it. He's got a lot of green in front of him. Down to the 20, lowering the shoulder and carrying Browning all the way to the 15-yard line. You know what the last 10 yards of this run reminded me of? Carson Wentz. He wasn't going out. I'm going to put my shoulder into this guy, drive as hard and as far as I can. Certainly remember how Carson used to finish his runs. He wanted to hit somebody. And ever since he's gotten to the Eagles, they've been trying to get, get him that to out of him. Do that. <laughs> Stop doing that, Carson. So a big run there on third and 18 for Trey Lance. Ty Brooks squeaking through a hole again. Another tackle for Mickey Kane, helped there by Senate. As North Dakota State continues to have its way on the ground down to the six. Ty, we probably don't give him enough credit for how he's able to run in traffic. Trying to pick up blocks, you see where Brooks is able to get very good yardage on that first down play. But we know that you pitch it to him and watch his speed fly to the outside. We've seen that a lot, but that's what Ty Brooks has developed into a more all around back. Williams tiptoeing oh. through a hole. And that was really well done. It looked like he was gonna streak in for a touchdown and then holding on to a leg for dear life was Del Grasso. 
And that's very close to the first down marker. Boy, did Williams make a nice cut right at that line of scrimmage, and I thought he was going to pop it into the end zone. So, yeah, the senior linebacker getting on the legs of Williams and able to keep his or stop his momentum. Is a first down, though. See number 72, Jalen Sundell into the game right now for North Dakota State. And very high on this young man as well. Just a redshirt freshman out of Maryville, Missouri. 6'5", 290. High formation again. Play action, Lance. Wide open again. Another tight end. And another touchdown. Babich has his second of the day. So far again, you like what you see from Trey Lance and his decision making. He rolled and looked like he had an opportunity maybe if he could run around or through a guy to get into the end zone with the running the ball. And all of a sudden he sees Babbage is just absolutely wide open for that touchdown. Extra point is good. And the lead is now 36-0 North Dakota State with 45 seconds to go here in the first half. Trey Lance in the red zone is love finding those tight ends. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Lance sells the fake, gets past Brunner. And here I'm thinking, oh, he's going to run it. But he pops that head back up. You put it on a swivel. And you see Babbage going to the back of the end zone. Settles down for that touchdown. Been a good afternoon for that young man in his starting debut. 9 of 10 for 172 yards and four touchdowns. His understanding of the playbook, you would think as a redshirt freshman, would not be as deep when you're talking about the kids or the guys who played in front of him. But Coach Roll says, yeah, he is almost there with Easton Stick in terms of his understanding of the total package and the types of plays that the Bison have available in their offensive playbook. It's quite a compliment. It certainly is. Wagner continues to handle the kickoff duties. With the injury to Reinholz, another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Samuels hit and taken down on the play by one of the backup linebackers, Mason Hofstead, sophomore out of Cannon Falls, Minnesota. Well, he has played well enough this fall to actually work his way onto the uh, the two deep at the uh, the Will linebacker position behind Aaron Mercadell. Tough first half for Brown, just four of 13 for 25 yards in the interception. I would suspect Butler will not get too crazy here with only 40 seconds left in the first half. Snyder, nice move in the hole around a couple of buys and defenders before he is taken out by Josh Hayes. It's going to happen all season long, but uh, but really, unless Snyder has the ball. There doesn't seem like there's much of a chance for Butler to advance the ball. At least that's the way it's been in this first half. Clock continues to run. Brown unloads again, and this ball is caught. Hey, Steven Dennis, he's a big target out there, and he's out of bounds at about the 44. Did get the first down. Tutsi and Hendricks are playing at least 15 yards, 17 yards off the ball. Brown flares it out, tried to put some touch on that and get it over Josh Hayes and drop it into Dennis, but it's incomplete. It is really a pleasant day for football. Not a lot of wind, right around 70 degrees. Well, three years ago when you scheduled this thing, why would you not? want to schedule it on a nice day <laughs> back indoors next Saturday as North Dakota comes to Fargo Brown again a quick drop and somehow I squeeze that ball in there were all sorts of green jerseys around Hanky Hayes and Tutsi but it's completion now with 10 seconds to go in the half as Dennis makes another reception that's a tough catch in traffic multiple players hitting you you better hurry up and go here five seconds and finally, a timeout called with three seconds to go. Some confusion on the Butler sidelines. 
Butler. That's their third and final charge time out of the half. It'll be 30 seconds in duration. Drew Bevelheimer is an excellent field goal kicker. His career long is 47. From here, you're looking at about 52. Well, you just mentioned there wasn't a lot of wind if you had a really tough breeze coming from the north or northwest, then maybe he'd give it a whirl. But And he is going to kick it off the dirt portion of the infield right about where a shortstop would normally stand. His biggest field goal of the year was the last play of the first game last season. 44 yarder that beat Youngstown. And he's going to have to kick it off the dirt here as well. Which will be interesting. Bevelheimer, 36 career field goals, 8 of 9 last year. As you mentioned, including that game winner, Youngstown. It's down, it's up, it's shanked. Had enough leg on it, but it veers wide left. And that will take us to the That's end of the first, first half. half. North Dakota State, 349 yards offensively, Butler just 67. And the Bison lead it 36 to nothing here at halftime on the Ag Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Stay with us. The proceed halftime report is coming up on the other side of this timeout with Kyle Emanuel and Beth Hool. Let's go down. Yeah, Coach Jens is still talking Ryan with one Gellner. of the uh, the officials. Now he's to Ryan. Ryan Gellner is with Coach Maddens. Matt, a pretty, uh, pretty good first half. Uh, things really going your ways, both sides of the ball. Well, we're doing a good job right now. I think balls have been on the ground too many times, too many penalties right now. I mean, we start the game off with a, with a great return, and all of a sudden we have, you know, the new rule that we emphasized off all camp, the wedge block, and take, you know, we have the ball down here, you know, 30 yard line. So little things like that frustrates you that you've worked on, but we'll continue to get better as the second half progresses. Trey Lance has been able to show off a little bit. We knew he could run, he could throw as well. He has a he, he big arm, strong kid, has a great composure. Uh, what you see is what you're going to get out of him. I'm excited where he's at right now. Uh, you know, we just got to continue to, you know, make sure we hang on the football still. There's opportunities that we left on the field, and I get frustrated with that. Good luck the second half. Thank you. Guys. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Proceed halftime report. When we come back, 36-0, North Dakota State in the season opener. Bison looking to move to 1-0 and and win it their 20 seconds straight game in the FCS. Well, welcome back to your proceed halftime report. Kyle Emanuel back up here with me in the booth. What do you want to see from the Bison second half? Well, I think, you know, Coach Hens from this team, you really don't want to see a drop off. I know it was, you know, a dominant first half, but things can change quickly. We, this is kind of what we expected, but you don't want to see a drop. You want to see something start quick, whether it's defense. I think defense is out there first. You want to see a three and out, and then hopefully you can get some young guys in and gain some really valuable experience for them. Yeah, we saw some great depth from the uh, running back group but you really want to start to see that throughout you know they rotated a lot of guys through those key positions but let's see a few more of those wide receivers maybe even there's people all over the board that need these reps and like you said uh, Trey Lance is going to be thrown to a, a lot of new guys this year and if they can get in and gain some valuable like I said a valuable game experience it's just different than a practice and really quick how important is that shutout it's big. It's always big, especially as a defense, you want that. But and, and then as starters, you kind of come out and you're hoping that your backups can can continue and finish out the job. A lot of pride still left on the field for this second half for NDSU football. We're going to toss it back over to Brian Sean and Lee Timmerman now. All right, thanks recording. so much, Beth. We are here with Ryan Gellner, who is with Butler head coach Jeff Boris. Coach, it, it didn't go the way you wanted right away. Trey Lance has been an awful lot for you guys to handle on offense. There's no question. They're really good. We knew they were good. They might be better than we than we uh, originally thought. But we just got to keep playing. You know, we don't have any 35 yard or 35 point plays. We just got to keep playing, and uh, I know we will. And um, you know, we said the bar was high, and it's certainly really high. There's no question. And they're a really good football team. What'd you tell the kids at halftime to try to it's spark them? I mean, it's it's it, it, you got to play to play, and plays lead to drives, and drive leads to quarters, and quarters lead to game. The score takes care of itself. So really, nothing's changed. You just got to play the play. That's all. You got to control what you control. That's all you can control. And uh, we just got to keep competing, put something uh, on tape here. The second half, we're going to be proud of. Yep. Really appreciate the time, Coach. Yep, Best of luck. You. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Not thanks. real happy, <laughs> guys. Back to you. <laughs> well, it's one of those afternoons where you're in a hostile environment. You're playing a team that 
has a 21 game winning streak has won seven of the last eight FCS national championships and you're starting a new quarterback you have four new offensive linemen three new defensive linemen you just learn from it right yeah it is the reality of the situation and as he said the score will take care of itself and and as the way that this game has played out in the first half the score is what it should be to be quite honest Garrett Wagner will once again handle the kicking duties and if you missed in the first half we mentioned that Jake Reinholtz the starting kicker has a quad issue not sure of the severity of it but he will not be back for the rest of this game and put it on a kickoff early in the first quarter and since then Wegner has been handling the kickoff duties for North Dakota State He's done a couple of directional kickoffs as well this one going the other way Another Peterson farm seed kickoff kickoff your planning season with Peterson farm seed and came on Samuels called for the fair catch and Butler will start from the 25 yard line valid fair catch signal was given by number 23 by rule the ball will be placed at the 25 yard so line you see number First 36 down. Griffin Crosa he has been kicking I believe at least some of the extra points in that first half that freshman we talked about out of Ohio there's a look at Jabril Cox the Bison defense a good job in that first half just 67 yards allowed and this is where this first team defense wants to be efficient get off the field and let your teammates have the opportunity to earn some snaps here in the second half I know please Kyle talked about that a little bit at halftime minutes. 15 minutes please but I also like the uh, how greedy the defensive players are as, as Emmanuel is talking about keeping and trying to get that shutout and, and keep it going no matter who's out on the field. Schwantz, the tight end in motion. Play action. Brown slinging it on the run. And making a nice catch. Going to the ground was Brad Huth, the junior receiver out of Hinsdale, Illinois. Comes up, grabbing his hip a little bit. And a first down for Butler. I believe who started that on the opposite way that it was rolled and so Brown had to buy some time in that little rollout for who to get all the way across. Take a look at your first half stats for the quarterback Sam Brown brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission funded by beef farmers and ranchers. Snyder this time slow down initially and then boy squeaked out of a tackle from Derek Tuska and Butler a couple positive plays up here as Snyder scampers up to the 45 yard line a couple yards short of a first down. Well you talk about fundamentals it doesn't matter that Snyder is 5'7 180 pounds if you don't wrap up what happens you have the opportunity to allow that offensive player to continue going that's what Snyder did he kept going on that play he's he's the type of kid I think every program could use somebody who has his talents he just plays hard every snap good receiver out of the backfield. Snyder slowed down boy nice sidestep around the initial tackler I think it was Jackson Hankey that was right in the backfield and gets enough for a first down up to the 48. When you ask a defensive coach who uh, give me some players in fall camp who have impressed you right there that guy number 52 Jackson Hankey has been so solid all year long I know athletically he's not the fastest guy in the world but he will be in the right position and get his teammates in the right spot Snyder again but flying in to make that tackle right away was Matt Beagler the defensive tackle young man that has worked himself into a rotational spot junior out of Underwood Minnesota Nodak insurance company replay Beagler fighting past the block of MacArthur the veteran offensive lineman Beating his man to the inside, he he won on that slant, then squared himself up and got in on the tackle. That's about as good as you can do it, Matt Bigler. Snyder motioning out. Brown hangs in there and delivers on target, and it's caught Hanky on the coverage. Reception made on the play by John Turley, junior wide receiver out of Charlotte, North Carolina. First down for the Bulldogs inside the Bison territory. Throwing it out to the wide side of the field, so you need time. Brown, to me, that appeared, in my mind anyway, to be his most impressive throw of the day. He really stood up strong, had his feet under him, got his hips through the throw. That was a nice job to the wide side. Had the time as well to get the feet set. Brown hesitates. That ball was deflected and batted down, incomplete. 
Uh, Karch was right there and he had help. I don't know if Cole was the one that had the hand on it. Cole Karch in his senior year came here as a defensive end and worked his way into the middle. He's up to 271 pounds. That is Karch that he had the hand up there. Senior out of Germantown, Wisconsin. His versatility of we're recruiting athletes mm -hmm. and then seeing where their body ends them ends up. That's what Karch kind of was. He, he didn't come here as a D tackle. Boy, Snyder running really tough. Ran through another tackle, finally taken down by Tuxi and Darnell. Up to the 30 yard line. We'll bring up third and four. Nose guard Jack Darnell following the play, getting in there, putting a pretty good pop on him, but you should. He's what, 288? You got about 100 pounds more weight from Darnell onto the kid he just tackled. Butler just one of seven on third down today. Bulldogs have put together a nice drive here to open up the second half. Sweet play going outside and running for the first down was Nick Orlando. We saw that play in the first half. He's a backup quarterback, but using your athletes where you can find space for them, and the Bulldogs move the chains again. I think it was Brad Snyder, the one, too, who threw the key block on the edge that helped uh, allow the man to run to the outside. So not over, only have we seen Snyder catch it, obviously run it, but now he's making critical blocks at the point of the attack to keep this drive going. Give again in the middle and more room as Snyder slipping through some tackles and tiptoeing around some guys and showing a lot of power down to the 13 yard line. Boy, this young man continues to run really hard. Tough guy to bring down. Nodak Insurance Company replay. But Darnell gets moved. I know it's one of the spots where, you know, he's supposed to plug up the middle, couldn't do it, moved from his spot. Snyder sensed that. And now let's see now if Butler is able to go back to a play similar to that or a play similar to that uh, on that third down play on the pass. Because once Butler finds success, they like to try to go back to it. Just did. Snyder this time not the room. As Mercadell turns him back with Hanky at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Well, similar looking plays, and that's just the difference between executing it and not at the point of attack by the Bison. The earlier play, obviously, NDSU got beat. That time, everybody had their gap control, allow your linebackers to come up and make the read and make the tackle. Again, into traffic, Marquise Bridges, Michael Tutsi closing quickly, incomplete, will bring up third and long. There was a lot happening that the Bison had to do defensively to keep that play from being effective. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Mercadell setting down on Snyder, so he clears. Tutsi also trying to come up and help, but not before. Bridges shows what he's very good at. He's, he's got super ball skills at the point of attack. Third and ten. Butler's eaten up five minutes on this opening drive in the second half. Brown near side. Too tall for Steven Dennis. And that will bring up fourth down. And here comes the field goal units. Brown elected to go off to his right, which was the man to man one on one coverage. Otherwise, everyone else in the receiving position out on a pass route was up to the to his left. He looked he liked the one and one but couldn't get the connect. So Bevelheimer was wide left on his first attempt from 52 yards. This one. Certainly easier 30 yard attempt here for Bevelheimer and this time it is up and it is good and Butler is on the scoreboard here at Target Field in Minneapolis. 
driving down deep into Bison territory and it's a positive if you're coach Boris you'll take it it's very positive you're able to keep able to keep the chains mo moving keep your offense out there on the field and so so some of those adjustments made at halftime you saw happen in that first drive so yes uh, the Bulldogs have to be happy buying building or refinancing start with a Gate City Bank blue standard pre-approval and experience a better home loan get started today at GateCity.Bank for a better way of life member FDIC equal housing lender <laughs> Hey, 67 right. yards in the first half for Butler. And on that drive, 52. I would assume, too, that the uh, the number ones, if you will, in the Bison defense just earned another rep instead of not being out, uh, not making it a clean defensive series. Ty Brooks, Dimitri Williams, back deep for North Dakota State. Bevelheimer uh, chips it down there. It's taken by one of the up men. That's Adam Cofield. Cofield into a pile. And he is taken down at about the 32-yard line. That's where North Dakota State will start it. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Now the first crack for this Bison offense in the second half. And obviously NDSU wants to continue that very much successful first half the offense had. You see the, the mouth guard from Trey Lance too hanging on his face mask. I don't know if he put it in once in the first clock. half. Tyler Roll thinking we would see a combination of gap schemes offensively in the running game. We have seen that a good chunk here in the first half. Brooks trying to bounce out. He lost the football. It's picked up by Del Grasso, and he's going to take it in for a Butler touchdown. Yeah, the Bulldog fans, you can't draw up a better start. The long drive for the touchdown. The ball comes out from behind, but I don't think Brooks saw him. Pops right up to Del Grasso. And the senior takes it in for the first touchdown for Butler. Yeah, Brooks just didn't know he was there. Nice job to rip the ball out of there. That was Mahalik, I think, the defensive end that got the ball free. It was blocked initially and didn't give up on the play. And Del Grasso, right place, right time. And Bevelheimer has the extra point. A flag did come out. I don't know if the... Bison were drawn off, or Logan McCormick may have jumped a little bit early. Offside. Defense. Never heard of. That probably has been declined. Result of the play. Extra point is good. So Butler coming out here with 10 quick points here to start the third quarter, and it's 36-10. Time now for the Gate City Bank fan cam. And again, send us your home or watch party picks, and we can show those in the fourth quarter. So upload those to the Valley News Live Facebook page, wherever you are. I know there are dozens of watch parties all over the country that get together to watch North Dakota State football on Saturdays. If you're mad at you can't like the way your team has come out here to start the second half. No, like I said, if you're if you're going to look at Butler and go, it couldn't have started better. You look at NDSU side and you say it couldn't have started worse. The defense giving up the long drive, and the offense comes on the field hoping to take all that momentum back, and you give up six points. Brooks back deep again with Dimitri Williams. Bevelheimer will boot it away once again. 
was successful on that low line drive last time. Taking a knee was Cofield. At about the 20. And it's not that the Bison on the on the uh, on the fumble did anything that was crazy. Just looked like an outside, simple outside zone play. Somebody made a nice defensive strip. Williams will be the tailback here with Malmstrom the fullback in the I formation to start this drive for North Dakota State. Williams, boy, a nice move around one man. And then running free and finally ridden down at the 40 yard line by Mickey Kane. But a gain of 20 there for Dimitri Williams to open up this drive. As soon as that Butler defense made the shift, you saw Lance step up and then make a quick call. So he was making an adjustment on the run play. Trey Lance numbers here in the first half. As Cofield takes off up to nearly the midfield area. And that brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. You can see the Bison want to play some hurry up football right here. Get to the line, get it snapped, and get moving. And that'll be a, enough for a first down inside Butler territory for Cofield to the 49 of the Bulldogs. Butler picked seventh in the Pioneer League preseason poll. Four and seven a year ago. And one of the charter members of the Pioneer League, too. So as long as that league has been around, Butler has been in it along with Dayton Drake and Valpo. Lance hanging in there. Finds an open man, and that is the freshman receiver, Zach Mathis. And boy, you want to talk about a tall receiver out of Florida, this young man. Came in at six foot six from the Tampa area, and now up to 186 pounds. I like how Lance was able to, to get it. See, look, he's he's not abandoning a little pressure. That's about the first time he saw some pressure to slid a hair to his left, let the play develop downfield. It wasn't there, so you dip it underneath to your red shirt uh, freshman Mathis, and he's able to pick up that first down. You gotta like what you've seen out of Trey Lance today. Brooks following his fullback Malstrom and Brooks past everybody. Ty Brooks touchdown. How do you make up for a fumble? You do that. Outside zone, look at the slant for the offensive lineman. Beautiful job by Zach Johnson. He turns the guy, so does Cordell Volson. You have Malstrom trying to lead up there. Big tight end blocked as well. I think Andy Voyan took the his Voyan, guy 89, down. 89, yes. I thought at first or it was Cole an 81. Jacobs. Maybe it was Cole Jacobs that oh, was down oh, there. Yeah, it was Cole Jacobs, excuse me, yeah. Making that block downfield, so well done to allow Brooks the opportunity to run that one in. Ty Brooks, now up to 93. Yards on the ground, and the Bison of 43 to 10, 7.45 to go here in the third quarter. Back with the Gate City Bank fan cam. It's left time to send us your home or watch party picks in the fourth quarter, but here's some of the folks that made the trek to Minneapolis, about 35,000 of them from all over. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Fair catch. But we'll start at the 25 once again. Take a look at the Bobcat scoring recap. North Dakota State after bit of a shaky start here to start the second half. Goes 80 yards in just five plays as Ty Brooks runs it in from 36 yards to push the lead back to 33. 
Ty Brooks named one of the captains. And when you talk to the Bison coaching staff, they talk about how much he has matured and grown mentally. Brown dropping it off. And that is complete to the tight end, Austin Schwantz, sophomore out of Palatine, Illinois. Kind of a tall task there for Tutsi to bring the big man down. But Michael Tutsi coming down from his safety position, number 25, does a fine job in the run play, run fits. Bright, bright future for that young man. Bridges coming in on a corner blitz, and he slowed Snyder down and then got in on the tackle as well. I think he had his lower leg the whole time. Karch also plugging things up in the middle. We'll bring up third down. Now the Bison go to nickel, so Bridges will play the slot instead of from his corner position. He's the guy that makes that adjustment. Booth in motion. Brown delivers Talbert on the coverage. And Stephen Dennis, the intended target. Incomplete. Bison did a lot of very aggressive things at the line from their secondary purposes. We talked about the nickel position. We also had uh, uh, had uh, James Hendricks go down and play really strong at the line. Tutsi playing a middle free, so there was nothing that's going to be uh, available over the middle. So Brown had to go to his outside, but very aggressive at the line of scrimmage with the DBs. Dingman on to punt it away, and Trevor Height is back for this punt return for North Dakota State, junior out of Pepin, Wisconsin. And he makes the fair catch at the 40-yard line. We'll be back to field. Target Field in Minneapolis. 6.25 to go on the third quarter. 43-10, North Dakota State leads on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Kate City Bank Home Loans are locally approved, financed, and serviced. Kate City Bank, for a better way of life, member FDIC, equal housing lender. First and 10, North Dakota State. From its own 39-yard line, design run for Trey Lance. Keeps the feet moving, and now he's off to the races. Trey Lance down the sideline, 61-yard touchdown. Six three, two twenty one, and he can move. Quarterback designed run all the way. Saw Zach Johnson get a little bit of a block, and once he pops free, that big man has wheels. He's able to easily win the run to the pylon. Extra point is booted through, and North Dakota State quickly responds after getting the football back. Fifty to ten. As Trey Lance. Continues to make things happen. His second rushing touchdown of the day. The redshirt freshman from Marshall, Minnesota. Playmaker. <laughs> North Dakota State now leading 50 to 10 on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Trey Lance, a 61 yard dash to the end zone. His second touchdown run of the day. He's also thrown for four touchdowns today. Wegner, the Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Avon Smith running away from one of the buys and true freshmen that are out there. Kobe Johnson, a 5'9 freshman, 177 out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. And that is a state North Dakota State has gone into now the last couple of years trying to find players, and they really have a lot of good things to say about this young man and his approach. Well, he's fast. He was in the 10s uh, running the 100 in high school just to give you an opportunity of, uh, to, to get a little bit of a feel on why he's going to, to, to be on there. And in fact, a couple of coaches says it's going to be hard for us to keep that kid off the field this year, despite the fact that he is just a freshman and a true freshman. Brings a militaristic approach to the game, like Bruce Anderson did. That's what Tyler Roll told us in our conversation. Smith <laughs> sidestepped a couple of men, but he's not going to get away from Tony Pierce. 
who throws him to the ground. No game. Now Jackson Brown didn't make the tackle, but he helped make the play because he got out so fast and was able to, to force that back into where your pursuit was from. So Jackson's like, can't beat, get beat to the outside. He turned it back in and it became virtually no game. Second and 10 and a couple of different people move that time. Not sure who drew who off. I think it was Derek Tuska that jumped, but now the official is signifying it's against Butler. Ball being snapped. Ball start. Offense, number five, five-yard penalty, still second down. That is Adam Baker, sophomore wide receiver. Now here's the, the Bison scored so fast, but this is the last touchdown. Dylan Radens, he moves. It's an unbalanced line. I want you to watch Zach Johnson and how he stretches, cuts that playoff as we roll it. This previous touchdown from Ty Brooks, really nice job in athleticism. And also Cordell Bolson forces his guy back inside. You're unbalanced. You get your three best offensive linemen on the one side of the center. Very effective play. Nice work by that offensive line. Dropped off to Smith, who's shown some shiftiness. Boy, he's hit hard there by James Kayser. I really like this young man as well. Sophomore out of St. Cloud, Minnesota. Played in 12 games last year, mainly on special teams. Kayser didn't take long this year throughout fall camp to kind of shoot his way up that depth chart. And uh, <laughs> he's he, uh, many of the same ways that you could describe Tutsi in the way that he likes to attack a ball carrier. James Kayser is the exact same way. Those guys like to hit, and, and you're playing a perfect position to do it from that strong safety spot. Brown hit as he threw. Early. The intended target that time was Adam Baker, and here comes a flag. Boy, Brown had to pick himself up off the turf that time. He took a pretty good shot on the backside. Well, he needed some help to get picked up off the field. <laughs> he was drilled pretty hard, but that was a pass interference, I thought, when the play was active and live, that he was there too early. Defense, number 14. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. And that was against Josh Hayes. Let's take a look at a word brought to you by the Bank of North Dakota. My plan was to get a degree in engineering. And with the help of a student loan from Bank of North Dakota, I did. If you want to build something solid, you need a plan. Bank of North Dakota, helping you achieve more. So I'll set up Butler at the 37-yard line, first and 10. North Dakota State had that play well covered. Oku getting in on that tackle for North Dakota State. Smith able to get maybe a yard. Well, as hard as Brown was popped on that previous pass play, you could almost guess that a run was coming. Let's look at Lane Tucker also got in on that tackle. Quick drop again, dropping it off. Boy, Smith juggled and then somehow caught it. But he has quickly taken down. First on the scene that time for North Dakota State was Mason Hofstad. There's Ogbu Barty is what everyone calls him. His first name's Bartholomew. What a what a story. I mean, you, it would take 10 minutes to tell his story, but. And we will throughout the course of the year. Let's go down to Ryan Kellner for a first international bank and trust sideline report. Hey guys, just a quick update on the total attendance official now from the Minnesota Twins and from North Dakota State. Today's attendance 34,544. 34,544. Just under 35,000. Offense. Boy, pretty impressive number. Five yard penalty. Which I Still believe third down. is the 10th largest crowd that NDSU has played in front of. And there's a drive for five campaign going on right now at North Dakota State. They're trying to get 5,000 team makers. $100 to become a team maker. Do you see what the 50 50 is going for right now? $90,000. <laughs> I didn't buy a ticket. <laughs> Smith 
Met taken down. Jackson Brown on that tackle. Jackson Brown really known more for what he's done as a special teams ace the last couple of years. Continue to work very hard to earn his spots on the field. And I, I talked to Sorry. Jackson. He like looked really big physically. And I so how much do you weigh? And he goes, ah, it fluctuates between 208 and 218, depending on the day of what I eat. Well, they list him right about in the middle of that yeah. at 212. But you know, he came in here, uh, you know, as a defensive back and made the switch to linebacker, made that adjustment. So here comes Drew Dingman on for the punt. Height back again on the return for North Dakota State. Knight has an opportunity maybe to return this one. From his 27. Had to put on the brakes there on the infield dirt. And he's able to get ahead to the 37 yard line. 10 yard return for Height. North Dakota State will get the offense on the field and we'll see if Trey Lance remains the quarterback or if perhaps we would see Zeb Nolan, the transfer from Iowa State, coming on here at some point. If there were any concerns about the way this field held up it has been it's been very good and here is Zeb Nolan the transfer from Iowa State was brought in it was kind of a surprise I don't know what people realize about it he was recruited by a couple other FCS schools battled for the starting job with Trey Lance Lance won the job in fall camp Sabian Clark also into the game lowers the shoulder ahead to the 41 and Nolan is a guy that came in Sort of working very hard with Jim Kramer. His father was a quarterback at Appalachian State, where Jim Kramer at that time was a strength coach. So now his son reunited with Jim Kramer here at North Dakota State. And here's a look at Zeb Nolan's numbers brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission, funded by Beef Farmers and Ranchers. His career at Iowa State, hey boy, he had a couple of really good games. He had 360 yards and two touchdowns against Oklahoma. His father, a high school coach down in Georgia as well. Clark, well, there's a good tough run. Met in the hole there by Aguilar and pushes the pile ahead. Going to be close to a first down, about a yard short. In our conversations with the coaches this week, one of them, uh, one of the coaches talked about, I just, I wish he would remember how big he is. <laughs> you know, and there we saw it. Put the, put the shoulder pads forward, had a good lean, put a pop on him. Sabian Clark was a very highly sought after recruit. I mean, he had a couple of power five offers. Out of Iowa, went to Bishop Heelan High School down in Sioux City, and North Dakota State was able to get him and excited about the potential of what he has. He did play in four games last year, was able to maintain his redshirt status. So here he is as a redshirt freshman. Clark through a hole. I think he's got enough. It's going to be close. No, well, not, that, short. not that you'd call Clark, you know, a speed burner, but he does have pretty good wheels. He. He ripped off. He had a 32 yarder, I believe, was his long last year. It's going to bring up fourth and one, and I don't see a punting unit coming on here. They're going to leave the offense on the field. At least as of right now. And they may just re let the third quarter run out here and they'll think about it. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. North Dakota State. That's the end of the third quarter. Responding after 10 quick points to start the quarter by Butler. And it's a 50 to 10 lead with 15 minutes to go from here at Target Field in Minneapolis in the 2019 season opener. And North Dakota State has brought on the punting unit here in this fourth down and one situation. To start the fourth quarter, Snyder back deep. How about Snyder? <laughs> he's had a really good game. Oh, he's a tough kid. We're going to try to pin Butler deep, angling this one. Snyder comes and makes the fair catch at the 20 yard line. Bison with 495 total yards through three. Butler with 143 yards. Well, Trey Lance has completed. Well, uh, 10 passes out of 11 attempts. Ty Brooks with 93 on the ground. Dimitri Williams with 61 rushing yards. Adam Cofield with 31 yards on the ground. And seven different receivers have caught a pass today as well for the Bison. So good balanced effort in this 2019 season opener. Brown remains in the game. 11 of 25 for 82 yards in the interception by Hendricks. 
Well, Smith, boy, met, and he has hit really hard. And taken down <laughs> by Costner Chang. Started off as a fullback walk-on from Castlewood, South Dakota. Bulked up and is now one of the defensive linemen. There's a look at the score by quarter. 36-0 at half. Butler, 10 quick points to start that third quarter, and then the Bison responded on two explosive plays. Reminiscent of uh, the way a lot of games went last year where the Bison were able to establish uh, dominance early in the game. Brown out to his tight end, Schwantz. Quickly closing that time, I believe, was Bo Pauly. Was. Pauly. High school teammates with Dylan Ratens at Becker, Minnesota. One of those guys that's trying to fight for that backup spot at Mike Linebacker, along with Mark Stump. Yeah, those two uh, are the main ones, and they're listed on, on the depth chart who are trying to earn more reps in that middle. Yeah, you're right, behind Jackson Hankey. Mark Stump, the redshirt freshman, he's from Bismarck. Brown on third down, flushed out of the pocket. Tutsi came on a safety blitz, and now Brown's going to try to run for it, and he stepped out of bounds with Destin Talbert bearing down on him. And that will bring up fourth down. Brown realized I got a lot more football to play. <laughs> I was real interested when he was about five yards away from the first down marker. About, well, couple of steps before he went out how aggressive he was going to be but actually he's a lot shorter than I thought he was Dingman on for another punt Trevor height back deep once again for North Dakota State was well, probably Dingman's best effort nice high punt sends height back to his own 26 yard line and that's where North Dakota State will have it when we come back 1257 to go in the fourth quarter Bison in cruise control, looking to move to 1-0 here in 2019. Welcome back to Minneapolis. Show your Bison pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Go to stay. We'll try to run some clock here. Sabian Clark. Looks like the five. The Bison will do it with a fresh offensive line. I see Cody Mauk out there. Zach Kubis. Zach Willis just snapped that last ball. You know, Sundell had been out there earlier. And I th think Quinn Allo. Yes, he is. Quinn Allo is out there as well. Interesting story in Quinn's journey to the offensive line, isn't it? Yeah, started as a defensive lineman, War 97. They transitioned over to the offensive side of the ball and has worked himself into an opportunity to play a few more snaps. Zeb Nolan under pressure, got rid of it, as Mickey Kane was coming hard on the rush from the backside. And we'll bring up third and five. Andy Boyan was in the area, so you don't have to worry about a grounding call or anything like that. Butler will return home to host Indiana Wesleyan and then Taylor before heading out to take on number 24 Princeton in late September to round out the non-conference portion of the schedule before Pioneer League play starts. Nolan has some time, fires, boy you can see his arm strength and that's complete to Andy Voyan. Inside Butler territory down to the 40 yard line before he is tripped up. And taken down. When I talked with Coach Hedberg, the quarterback's coach, earlier this fall, he wanted to just the people to understand and know as we look on the Nodak Insurance Company replay, the, the uh, reception that Boyan made, that we have two really good quarterbacks here, meaning both Lance, who won the job, and Nolan. He said, he said about Zeb, he has that gunslinger mentality, runs a little bit better than you would think he does, but when he gets the ball in a passing situation, He's good at it. Looked like Kane may have jumped and then Sundell just went up and touched him in the neutral zone and that should be five against Butler. Offside. Defense number 77 crossing the neutral zone causing the offensive players to move. Five yard penalty. First down. And they got Joe Mara the redshirt freshman out of Westfield Indiana.
That goes Kobe Johnson, first career carry for Kobe. Spinning his way across the 30-yard line before he is turned back by Brunner. Johnson, one of those guys that we talked about earlier, has an opportunity to help this team this season. Whether or not he plays beyond the four-game rule or not remains to be seen, but as Tyler told us, you had mentioned earlier, it's going to be hard to keep him off the field. Off the he's, field. Shown, he's shown too much. He, yeah, and, and I know you talked a little bit about how uh, Coach Roll you know, likened him to Bruce Anderson in the, his mentality and his personality. He says he's Bruce-like. Kobe again finding a streak. You can see the toughness of this young man dragging a tackler across the 20 yard line. As the offensive snaps have continued on this particular drive, you can see where Willis, the center, is actually getting a little bit more confidence. This back, ball comes back with a little extra zip on it. His first couple floated back there, which upsets the timing just a little bit. So that time you get the ball back to your quarterback, the handoff, everything, the timing of the play runs as it is supposed to. Boy, Cody Mauk had a pancake on Mickey Kane on that play. He just took him right to the turf. Johnson again, tiptoeing through the middle. Pretty good explosion there from the freshman inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal. Well, when you have a little bit smaller of a running back, you don't. the hole doesn't have to be quite as big, even though that one was real big at the point of attack. Well blocked. Johnson gets tripped up as he keeps that momentum going. Now Snugs may have saved a touchdown there. As Johnson was running free. Talk about Cody Malk. Came in at 225 pounds. About 60 pounds since he got here a couple years ago from Hankinson, North Dakota. Clark following his lineman. Touchdown. Also following, I think it was Travis Yonke out there on a lead block as well. Boy, for your number two unit on the offensive line to come in and do this, it's well done. Nice drive. Here's Alo. He's going to take away the outside. Boy, good seal block from Austin Avery, one of the backup tight ends as well. Booted through. Actually, that's who I said when I thought it was Yankee. You're right, it was 46. I thought I saw 40. 57 10, 9 25 to go. Field. Here at Target Field in Minneapolis. Clark in from a yard out, seven yards out. Let's take a look at the Gate City Bank fan cam. A lot of folks still hanging around. LT probably have plans to hang out downtown <laughs> including, afterwards. Including Kyle, who we just saw there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no no reason to go uh, too far out of downtown once you leave the stadium, I wouldn't think. Another Peterson Farms seed kickoff. Kickoff for planning season with Peterson Farms seed. This one will come down to Smith at his own eight yard line. Head to the sideline. Helping get in on that tackle was Jake Lippy, another freshman receiver out of Port Washington, Wisconsin. Had a late number change on him, number two. Yeah, he had been wearing number 35 right up until today, but he is, as you mentioned, wearing number two. And that used to be, one well, still, I guess, is Dom Davis's number, but of course, Dom is unable to play anymore. Unfortunately, torn ACL again as we take a look at the Bobcat scoring recap. Seven plays, 72 yards in three and a half minutes. Sabian Clark jaunting in. Yeah, that was a good drive from the number twos. Cameron Towns now in the game at quarterback for Butler. Quickly swings it out. Passes complete to Johnny O'Shea, and he is hit immediately by Trey Fort. It was a full-blown uh, quarterback competition this fall between Towns and Brown. Of course, Sam Brown won that job. This is Cameron Towns. He's redshirted earlier. He's in a senior season. 6'3", 190 pounds. Opportunity for each of these teams to get some backups in the game to get some live reps. Two 
Towns firing. And somehow that ball was caught. Boy, pretty good coverage on that play. Dawson Weber, I think, may have been the one that was out there. Yeah, Weber was on the coverage, and he was right there, but yet Turley the connection still, yeah. still made. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Brown kind of rides the hip on the fake just a little bit, delivers a nice ball, and gets it somehow through Weber. Weber from Elk Grove, California. Inside handoff. Good for a few yards. Taking down towards eight minutes to go here in the football game. Richie Dinehart on that carry. Redshirt freshman out of Naperville, Illinois. He's had his name a couple times with Mason Hofstad making the tackle, a sophomore from Cannon Falls. There's a look at Orlando, who has a couple of carries today, including a first down carry as a runner, and now is in a quarterback. He's the youngest of the quarterbacks on the roster. He's a redshirt freshman. Graham Toole on that carry, another redshirt freshman. His first of the day. Third and about two here. Orlando fakes the pitch, diving inside as the first down. Inside the 45 yard line. Kayser. I think Bo Pauly might have been the first there. Another young man you're seeing on the field is. Javier Derrett, a true freshman on the defensive line from Olathe, Kansas, was a big recruit for North Dakota State from down there, had a bunch of offers. Number 96 there in the middle. Towns, Turley, using his block and then slipping outside. Finally pushed out of bounds by Kayser, but he's got a first down to the 32. Johnny O'Shea is the one that threw that block. And Ray, the wide receiver. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Quick look. And there's the block on the outside. You work off that block. Past the diving defender. Very close to the first down and picked it up. Towns, boy, running all over the place. Just gets what he can. Six. I think Jake Cava was in, I believe, on in on that tackle. There's Jake, number 54. We say I believe or I think because we are a, we are a long, long way, way away. Between <laughs> where, between us and the ball is a is a a long distance. Lane Tucker making that tackle. Dinehart again. Clock continues to tick away. 5, 20, 18, 17. North Dakota State will return home to its regular home. Yeah, this is a home game. Yeah. At the Fargo Dome against North Dakota, the Fighting Hawks are leading Drake 19-0 in the third quarter. At the Alliter Center in Grand Forks today. Interestingly like, enough, no Missouri Valley teams have won so far here in week one. Youngstown State won the FCS kickoff. Every other Valley team has lost so far. Illinois State of Northern Illinois tonight has a chance to do it. Orlando is going to be close to a first down on the keep. And that will bring up fourth down. Cava with another nice play. Well, just to give you an example of how much a home game this is for NDSU, obviously you see the logos out there, but the first down markers. And everything had to be brought from the Fargo Dome here because you have to administer it as a as your home game. So you got to remember all those little details when you start packing the semi. 
Butler will leave the offense on the field. It's a long one here on fourth and one. Towns back in the game at quarterback. Orlando took the last snap. Heisen got a bunch in the box and somebody moved. Thought it was left tackle. And Treese is who I think moved. Ball start. Offense. Number 76. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Let's look at Grant Purley. For Wayne, Indiana. Sophomore, 62305. That is. So instead of a fourth and one, it'll be a fourth and six. Gets rid of it. And making the stop short of the first down was Hofstedt. The reception was made on the play there by Nate Rusk, one of the wide receivers, his first reception, but that'll be a change of possession. North Dakota State will take over. 3.42 to go. We're about to the end. 57-10, North Dakota State leads. Timeout on the field. Media timeout. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit gatecity.bank slash my card. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Noah Sanders. Quarterback into the game for North Dakota State. Sanders came here as a walk-on out of Apple Valley High School just down the road here in the Twin Cities. is the third quarterback on the depth chart holding Hotchkiss young man from Florida left the program after spring still smiling at how Johnson is able to dance in that traffic he's going to be really fun to watch and he's just getting started more the boys able to go into places like Texas Georgia Florida and find these skill guys that get looked over maybe just a hair too small but they can still play. Look at that. <laughs> Doesn't run like a 172 pounder, does it? Nope. Another look at it. Kodak Insurance Company replay. So carry. To go after and get after him there. This copyrighted broadcast is property of North Dakota State University. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or distribution without the consent of NDSU is strictly prohibited. Third and two. Sanders trying to get everybody squared away here. Four on the play clock. Sanders will throw. And complete. Mathis had to go to a knee, but he has enough for a first down to the 39. As you would imagine, some pretty soft coverage on the outside at this point of the game. Just going to give that first down if the pitch and catch can happen. What an advantage that height that Mathis has. Didn't get into a game last year, and they actually threw a pass his way. Just wanted to see how he would respond. They just love his ball skills. He can high point the ball. See, at 6'6", six, six, can go up over defenders, much smaller than he is. Just continue to try to fill out that big frame. Gains about five. Cody Mauk awkwardly falls to the ground, but looks like he's okay. Looks like Austin Avery picking up a couple of reps at that fullback position as well. And North Dakota State will just bleed out the clock here. No reason to rush anything. Johnson almost breaking free and now down the sideline still in bounds. Finally taken out of bounds. Inside the 30 yard line. Uh, you don't have to be real big physically to be strong. That was a strong run from the freshman. 
through the middle, a couple of arm tackles, broke him out. No doubt, and no, excuse me, Nodak Insurance Company replay. So right there, he squeezes through, pulls through that arm tackle, and then works his way after that point of contact about another eight yards up the sideline. Well, finally, Max Worth was able to smash him out of bounds. Johnson, six carries, 63 yards as North Dakota State goes into victory formation. The Bison will probably have to run one more play as Sanders takes a knee. Yeah, one more snap needed. But the Bison came here with uh, quite a few things on the to-do list, and you could check a lot of those boxes. Sanders takes one more knee, and that'll do it. From here at Target Field in Minneapolis, the first ever Division I game at this venue. The Twins will be back here in about a week as they continue their drive for the American League Central Division That's Championship. But Matt Etz, in his head coaching debut, wins his first game as a head coach at North Dakota State, and Trey Lance. What a start for him. Wow. One of many. Solid performances we're going to see from Trey Lance. Six hundred and five total yards for North Dakota State offensively today. Lance had one eighty five through the air and one hundred and sixteen I think on the ground. Six total touchdowns. That's not bad either. No it isn't. All you got to do that is just do it eleven more times and everyone will be happy. Now 14 more times. Well, I'm going to say through the <laughs> regular season. Fifty-seven ten is your final. The Bias return to the Fargo Dome one week from today to take on the University of North Dakota as non-conference play continues before the first road game at the University of Delaware on September 14th. Ryan Geller will try to catch a word here with Matt Entz. Coaches and the players all gathered. Right around that Bison logo in the center of the field. Nice salute there from the uh, the Butler players to the fans who made the trip from Indiana. Yeah, still a really cool experience for them to play in this type of atmosphere. And Ryan Geller is standing by with head coach Matt Entz. Matt, 57 points. That's a pretty good start to the season. It was, no question. Our kids played hard. Uh, there's always things as a coach that, unfortunately, you remember. Uh, the couple fumbles and things like that, ball on the ground too much, penalties. Those are things that we can fix. Um, you know, I'm happy with where we're at right now. We've got a long ways to go. I, I do know this football team can continue to get better every game this year. Did you take a chance to look around, look at this atmosphere, suck any of this in? Probably as I was standing on the first... Uh, uh, st uh, the stairs over there coming out the last step and just kind of uh, right before we had to run out and oh boy here we go uh, exciting uh, surreal uh, humbled to be the head football coach at one of the best schools in the country and you're one and oh congratulations yep. Yep. thank you very much I appreciate it guys back upstairs well good start to the 2019 campaign as North Dakota State wins its 22nd straight game now as a program the record for the Bison, 33. Yeah, that happens to be the record in the country, too, doesn't it? <laughs> amazing for FCS amazing how that yeah, works. Yeah, how does that work? Over 120 victories here in this decade. That's not bad either. We'll step aside. We'll be back. Look at some of your stats and some of your highlights from this afternoon's. 2019 season opening victory for North Dakota State. Back in a moment here to Target Field in Minneapolis. Fifty-seven ten is your final. North Dakota State pulling away from Butler after leading 36 nothing at halftime. 
Trey Lance, a tremendous performance in his starting debut, the first ever freshman to start a game for North Dakota State. You can't say enough about what this young man was able to accomplish in his first start. Oh, the Bison did a lot of things right, and I think they did just enough wrong so the coaches can keep that edge, and Coach Entz kind of hinted at that, alluded at that a little bit, because the, the perfect game has yet to be played, and it won't ever be played as long as coaches are looking at it. But, uh, yeah, if you would have wrote a script how you thought this game would play out, I think we saw it today. You saw a team that was just much more physical, much more talented. Butler had a little bit of a run to make themselves feel a little you know, nicer about how things went in the second half. Bison got to play just about everybody who came. So uh, again, about what you would expect. NDSU is a talented football team. And some of these guys that have not had a lot of meaningful reps LT mm -hmm were forced into action that were meaningful reps, and they all really responded. Even some of the backers that haven't played very much, when they came in, they did their job. I really like the drive that the number two offensive line, when they came in as a unit, marched it straight down and scored. Yeah, you're doing it against a team that had been beat up defensively a little bit, but, you know, no bad snaps, uh, no offsides, those little things that, uh, that you do to prepare for your opportunity uh, in that second half, they were able to do that. You know, everybody's wondering, how is this team going to compare and contrast? And, but one thing is, things culture-wise, the way they coach and teach the kids, the mentality they coach them with, that doesn't change. And I think you saw that in the field today. <laughs> you said it the first time, it's the same old North Dakota State when you just watch the team play. And through, they call it double reps through through camp. Actually, two teams going on both sides of the field, uh, you know, at all times. So so you're not standing around while someone else is getting an opportunity. So that's one of the things the Bison coaches, uh, and coaching staff has done over quite a few years to get their teams prepared and get them uh, in and out of huddles, get the snap. All those types of things that are important on Saturdays, they've done all fall, and we saw, saw it work here tonight. Let's take a look at some of your final stats uh, in a moment, but first we'll take a look at some of the highlights uh, for North Dakota State, and on the offensive side, there's a lot to get to. Oh, there's a ton of these. <laughs> in the first half, the Bison uh, were able to just to, here's a handoff to Dermiti Williams. Williams is able to get outside. He looked really sharp, I think, in his first opportunity to run. Here's Adam Cofield finishing a run. The Bison running back group, again, they haven't had a lot of reps when you had Anderson and Dunn, and you got a quarterback that can do this, too. And that, that's, pretty, that's pretty special, but I like the, the running back group, and, and the quarterback is dynamic. I saw a little change there on the swinging gate on uh, the extra point where James Hendricks ran the option with Reinholz who had the two-point conversion and then Ty Brooks Ran it tough inside ran it tough outside. You see the speed out electric that young man has the senior out of Fargo South And how about this catch from Phoenix Cole? Well, he helped set him up Do you see how he flipped the hips of the defensive back and then got downfield and was able to catch that baby? Uh, right in the bucket came straight over the top Lance gave his uh, wide receiver an opportunity to run under it Dimitri Williams tough running again and it seemed to take two or three Bulldogs almost every time to bring down the Bison running backs today. Josh Babich, a couple of touchdown receptions. Yeah. Lance really found some things with his tight ends. Here's a, another one to a tight end for a touchdown. So the tight ends were able to work against those safeties, get some mismatches. So through the air was effective, rushing on the ground, 388 yards, and the Bison defense didn't allow too much. And here's James Hendricks getting into double digits for his career in interceptions. And Lance again would take off and would have a couple of big runs, including another one on this designed run as he was able to scamper 61 yards. Oh, excuse me, that's not the 61 yarder there. That's one of the design runs where he lowered the shoulder to the 10 yard line. Again, the Bison just pounding the ball. Didn't see a lot of power in terms of running, but that outside zone, and here's another wide open tight end in the end zone. Babbage is second of the day, and then in the second half, continuing to just run the ball at will and get big chunks of yardage. Yeah, 45 rushes on the day, called by Tyler Roll. That was the 36-yard touchdown run for Ty Brooks. Hit that the home run out there as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Celebration afterwards. That made it 43 to 10, and here's here's the 61-yarder. 61 61-yarder. Now we wanted to show you a play on about how well the the uh, the play from Ty was blocked, and before we could even show it, boom, there goes 61 yards and another touchdown. The Bison scored that fast. And Zeb Nolan was able to come into the game and get a few reps as well. Sabian Clark, we saw Kobe Johnson. The stable's pretty deep 
on that offensive side for playmakers. It, it is. Uh, and again, you don't have Seth Wilson, who we thought coming into this year was just going to have a dynamite year. And he will be when he gets back. It's just not going to be this year. But the running back group is better much better than most people think. Let's take a look at the final stats brought to you by the North Dakota Certified Seed Producers and North Dakota State. Over 600 yards of total offense, 25 first downs. Yeah, the two turnovers, but in every other category, any issue pretty much dominated. Yeah, over 200 yards passing on 13 attempts. 11 completions on the 13 attempts as Trey Lance was 10 of 11 and Zeb Nolan was one out of two throwing the ball. But over 600 total yards, it, it, it just it, this looks like a stat sheet that we showed you a lot last year, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> a lot to a little, and we've seen, uh, seen that as well with a lot of different guys stepping into different roles defensively, only 198 yards allowed, only 67 first half yards allowed. Of course, Butler had 52 on uh, that first drive of the second half, and the Bison defense after that really controlled things. So a good start here uh, to start this 2019 campaign for the Bison. Here's a look at your stats brought to you by the North Dakota Certified Seed Producer. We'll step aside. We'll be back to wrap things up from here at Target Field in Minneapolis on the KBOI Campway R Bison Television Network. Back at the home of the Minnesota Twins, North Dakota State. First ever Division I football game here at Target Field in this venue. Brian Sean Lee Timmerman with you. Our NODAC Insurance Company player of the game is Trey Lance, the redshirt freshman quarterback out of Marshall, Minnesota, and he is standing by with Ryan Geller. Yeah, yeah, the kid from Marshall uh, does pretty well in front of, I guess you could call it the home crowd. Man, 10 of 11, 185 yards. Uh, you were slinging it out there. Yeah, it felt really good. Uh, receivers did a great job of getting open. Obviously, you saw that. I didn't have too many contested throws. Uh, Phoenix did a great job. The tight ends, the Chiefs did a great job. Uh, Hunter Luki had a big catch. Babo had a big catch. And obviously, up front, you know, I didn't get touched in the pocket. So uh, it feels pretty good having those guys. And you know, I think it's the best offensive line in the country, no doubt. Uh, those guys work their butts off every day, so it, uh, it shows. Take us through that first big throw, because that's the one that people are going to talk about. Perfect touch. You landed it right in the bread basket, laid it out front. The big throw, take us through it. Uh, Phoenix did a great job. Uh, running back did a great job with the action, but Phoenix did a really great job adjusting to it. Uh, I threw it a little behind him, so you know he really had to adjust to it. But uh, off, again, offensive line, uh, you know I didn't get touched. I had all day back there. I could have sat back there and patted the ball for 10 seconds. So they did a really great job up front. We knew based upon last year you could run the football, and you did again today. Two touchdowns, 116 yards rushing, on just five attempts. A lot of that credit, I assume, goes to your offensive line as well. Absolutely. I mean, you saw I didn't get touched. So uh, it feels really good running behind those guys. Uh, they just did a great job. They dominated. We talked about dominating the line of scrimmage early, uh, and they did it the whole game. Trey, we really appreciate it. Hopefully one of many talks after games this year. Our NODAC insurance player of the game is Trey Lance. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Guys, we will try to grab uh, Derek Tuska if Derek will slide on over. Derek Tuska, guys, had the first tackle of the football game. It was a tackle for loss, and that kind of set the tone for this football game. They didn't have a lot of open looks the entire game. Absolutely. We, uh, we expected them to run G, and uh, first play, that's what we got, and uh, we stopped it. So um, I don't know if we saw it again the rest of the game. So You held them under 90 yards rushing, which is a win any time you do that. Uh, under 90 yards rushing, pretty impressive. Yeah, it is very impressive. Uh, I was saying earlier, 90 is great, but it should have been less than that. We let up some uh, some plays, missed some tackles that we're going to be fixing, but uh, very, very happy with that. And that's the thing. In talking with Coach Entz, yeah, he's happy with the performance, but he said there are so many things we can improve upon. You don't expect that in a, in a game where you outscore the opponents by almost 50 points, but you said the same thing. you got to go back to work. Absolutely. We always got to improve, and then... Uh, that first game, getting that out of the way, seeing everything that we got to improve on, seeing what we did well. Uh, it's, it's first game is always uh, never know what to expect, so uh, it was good. Let me ask you about this atmosphere. You've played in some cool places. Frisco's cool. The Fargo Dome is cool. When you had a chance to look around, which I'm sure you did standing over on that sideline, what was this like? Because this was pretty magical. It was crazy. 35,000 plus uh, Bison fans filling up this whole stadium, green and gold. It was amazing. We got the best uh, best fans in the nation by far. We'll let you go back to work. We'll see you again next week. All right, thank you. Guys, back upstairs to you. Boy, Derek Tusk, big <laughs> yeah, boys for a big 2019. They are. There are guys that uh, the opponents will try to game plan 
specifically for number 91 is one of those players. No question. We'll step aside and be back to wrap things up here at Target Field in Minneapolis. The green and gold folks are celebrating all over downtown Minneapolis here tonight. Back to put a wrap on the 2019 season opener. North Dakota State 57 to 10 over Butler to move to 1-0 and get set to host North Dakota one week from today back at the Fargo Dome. Brian, Sean, Lee, Timmerman with you. Thanks so much for joining us all across the KVLY, KFYR, Buys, and Television Network. Defensively, Derek Tuska, we just heard from him a moment ago, said, yeah, we were okay, <laughs> but there's some things we want to shore up in terms of tackling, and they're going to have their opportunity to try to improve here as they take on a rival school in state next Saturday. Yeah, I thought for the most part, though, the defense was in pretty good position, and that's one of the things you want to do right off the gate is, is to make sure that you don't have many glaring errors in terms of execution and where you're supposed to be. I didn't see much of that today. We'll take a look at some of the defensive highlights today, and a lot there to show you as well. Not quite as many as the offensive side, but the Bison <laughs> were all over the place. There's that play we're Tuska talking about set the right tone. off the bat. Yeah, Derek Tuska setting the tone with the tackle for loss coming off the edge there, and Brown, it was never easy for him, and they, they did a good job, I would say, Butler getting the ball out of his hands quickly, but North Dakota State had a pretty good beat on what the Butler Bulldogs were trying to do. Yeah, there was James Hendricks closing on that particular play. Here's another out where the Bison corners today, both Hayes and Bridges, did some really nice work at the point of where the, the ball was, was thrown on the outside. Justice Kelly getting in for a sack. Young man that has kind of bided his time and getting in some opportunities at defensive end, junior from Milwaukee. Well, Snyder, I thought he was tough. He ran hard, played hard, but it was just tough to find a lot of room, especially in the first half. Yeah, and, and mostly through the first half, he was the only one that was able to gain any yards. Snyder ended up with uh, 58 yards uh, rushing, and there's the center field play that Hendricks made to pick up his 10th interception as a Bison. And yes, you're able to get a lot of different defensive linemen into the game, a lot of different linebackers into the game. So a good start overall, you'd have to say, for that part of the group and it'll be interesting to see how that depth develops over the course of this season. Uh, the, the one thing in the negative department was Jazir Cox. We'll have to see what his injury does if that uh, limits or, or takes away his ability to play this year but I, I think that's the only one we saw glaring today in terms of, of that department but yeah whenever you can get uh, everybody you brought out on the field to play it's a good day. And then we'll also Jake Reinholds with the quad mm -hmm. situation. That might force the freshman Griffin Krosa uh, into action as well as Garrett Wegner was handling the kickoffs. Scores from around the Missouri Valley, and I mentioned earlier, was not a great day for the Valley. Uh, it started on Thursday with some of the losses, but you saw Northern Iowa. They gave Iowa State all they could handle today in Ames. Lost in triple overtime, 29-26. And then Indiana State gave Kansas a good ball game down in Lawrence as well. Yeah, that was a low-scoring start. The more uh, more points in that second half for the Sycamores and the, and the Jayhawks, but uh, ultimately the team you would think would win that game did. And I know that Indiana State has a lot of hope in the, in the players that they have returning. There has not been much success in that program, but the, the trees think this is one of the years that they can do some things and pick up some wins. South Dakota, Montana, big early season non-conference matchup there between the Big Sky and the Missouri Valley. And how about the Grizz going on the road? Almost 500 passing yards for Montana and the win in Vermillion. Uh, yeah, that's uh, I, at first when you told me they were playing in Vermilion, I was like, really? Oh, that Montana would take that the game and make that road trip. But they certainly did and came out with that 31 to 17 win over uh, USD, who is a team I think that has a lot of questions to answer this year as well. Illinois State taking on Northern Illinois, maybe a chance to get an FBS win is there. Western Illinois lost, Missouri State lost on Thursday, as did Southern Illinois as well. So the Valley will try to get it back together here in week two of non-conference play. This was fun. It We've was been to a lot of cool places, but this one is is right up there. Yeah, this was uh, this was really a, a good day, I think, for NDSU and able to to um, the mar to market itself, show itself. The uh, the Bison have the opportunity to come in here, take over the stadium, take over downtown, which is certainly what they did, and they took over the football game, which we knew they were going to do against this Butler squad. Well, be sure to join us one week from today back at the Fargo Dome, North Dakota, the Fighting Hawks coming to Fargo, the second ever Division One meeting between those two old rivals. Kickoff at 2.30. Pre-game is at 1.30 all across the KVOI, KFYR, Bison Television Network. It has been a fun weekend here in Minneapolis. Green and gold have taken over downtown and it starts with a victory. 57-10 is the final. For Ryan Gellner, Beth Hull, Kyle Emanuel, Alex Egan, Lee Timmerman, 
and myself, Brian Sean, saying so long from downtown Minneapolis. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next Saturday back in the Fargo Dome.